Ethan. <laughs> Uncle Ethan, what the uh, fuck just, what did I just watch? Well, uh, you just watched uh, the court ordered, not court ordered, settlement ordered, right? Apology video. Apology. That was presented as a victory video <laughs> to his fans. His Jesus fans. Fucking, like, look, I, I, I'm here. Yeah. I've, I've maintained this position the whole time. I wanted Eric to not have it. You remember this. Oh, yeah. I didn't want, I didn't want this shit because I know what, like, I'm in a frivolous lawsuit. I, I never thought that the ISOM ministry's position was good. You had a different perspective. I you disagree. Actually, I think they absolutely yeah. did have uh, every right to sue him for trademark uh, infringement. We uh, we you, disagreed on this. Yeah, and then, uh, but I, I started, disagreed with you. I was pretty yeah. sure, just based on the fact that you know um, they they had the uh, the right to make comic books over at ISOM uh, and uh, the ISOM ministry, and uh, Eric was out there associating uh, the word ISOM, the brand ISOM, with so much toxic, what people would call toxic shit. Yeah. Which and nobody that, wants. I'm all for it. I, I love the culture war. But, like, you know, a ministry doesn't it, want to be anywhere near that. Shit. No, they want liberal Christians and conservative <clears throat> Christians. Right. So uh, they they have a different mission than we do and that Eric does. And, and so this, this is the fundamental disagreement between us. But you actually had started to convert me. You challenged because you, like, while I'm, a, while I'm a lawyer, have my legal perspective. Uh, but part of doing law, though... As you know, practical law is different than being a lawyer in concept, right? right? And so you go, I go, well, there's no brand confusion here, like really. Like there's a ministry, they they sell they give these pamphlets to churches for free. This guy is selling these books on a crowdfunding campaign. You go, and you're like, but listen, the negative, the negativity but here's my point of view about that. Beyond the negativity, <clears throat> we didn't know. None of us understood when Eric announced this comic book, and we were all very excited uh, about it. Uh, everybody searched the internet. They searched Google to find out well, why won't Eric tell us what ISOM means? What is it? Is he's clearly a Christian superhero? He's got a cross on his belt. And uh, the first thing that popped up when you Google, you find uh, ISOM, the church, the ministry, the International School of Ministry, and everyone who searched, and I saw it all over the internet, said Eric must be partnered with the International School of Ministry to make a superhero comic. That's cool. I bet he got a little bit of extra funding there. It's probably going to have a religious theme. Uh, and so, provably, there was brand confusion. We were all confused. All, you know, Eric didn't say anything about his grandfather or any of these things. Isom is just his name. That's all. That, he didn't say anything like that. He was very mysterious about it, which led a lot of people towards confusion. Now, I, I did see, like, I saw it back at the beginning when someone showed me the old tweet. Now, to be very clear, the old tweet Eric did had a, what we would call a hater, uh, and probably a pile of garbage, point out that he might be infringing on this trademark, and he ignored it. And a lot of people did, because the person who sent it was not a good faith actor. But that doesn't matter to the ultimate result. Because a bunch of good faith actors in the Twitter thread did Google it and they're like, hey, actually, you know, like this is a thing that exists. This is a trademark that's existed for a long time. And he kind of just ignored all that and, and did whatever. But that being said, um, there, there is this idea, like brand confusion. You think of it generally as if I go to the store and I look at these two things on the shelf, am I confused? Right. Well, I can kind of see how ISOM gets confused with a pamphlet about ministry. Mm -hmm. If you go, well, maybe they made a comic book, but it's, it's a little bit of a bridge. I'm not saying it's an impossible bridge, but it's a little bridge. But then you brought up this point though, um, that I, I had not considered initially, which was, is their incessant negativity and their boisterous behavior linking this, uh, linking this ministry to negativity that they wouldn't have otherwise had. And that was weird because it was. And that's when I started to change my mind. And again, I'm I'm like a, I'm not a trademark attorney, not mm. a patent attorney or whatever. I give my opinions based on legal legal principles, but you give your opinions based on experience in trademark. Like you've had to fight trademarks. You've talked to plenty of trademark attorneys many times. And yeah. they they go through these they have to go through these uh more abstract legal questions like how do we show that they're fucking with our thing that we own? And um that's a different perspective. And so you had kind of converted me that there may be a case there. And then it only kind of grew after that 
which is great. But what drives me fucking nuts is he's doing this uh, hostage video on the settlement. And he's pretending that all of the things he said literally didn't happen. And like, why? Why is this like, why? Why is this a thing? What happened there, Ethan? Well, the only thing that they said was, <clears throat> what? Listen, uh, you know, you're going to have to one of the one of the things, the, the stipulations, you're going to have to fix the damage that you did to our ministry by calling us fake Christians and uh, all of these things. That was uh, wild. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so he's like, oh, I'll make a video. You got to make a video. And in the video, you have to say we're good Christians. OK, you have to say that to your fans and you have to calm them down. So they stop attacking us because they were I mean, they they were demonized. And so Eric makes a video and it's, you know, they don't tell you exactly what, you know, how to say it. You're allowed to frame it the way that Eric did, which yeah. is we're, <laughs> we're, we're best picture, friends now. Can, you can picture the Irish Christian pastor <laughs> like there with a cross, like off screen, like he's ISIS, huh. like with an AK, except it's a crucifix. He's like, Jesus Christ died for your sins. And Eric's like, okay, we have to, we have to go ahead and explain this. Like why we spent so much time questioning their Christianity and saying they're not legitimate Christians and then going, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, no, uh, that was kind of bad. And that was kind of a bad thing. Well, I think his lawyers reined him in, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, I think they, well, I think the at, agreement reined him in. Well, Oh, what do you mean by that? You think he the saw settlement. what the offer was and he went, I can do that. You think so? Well, they, I think, I think basically ISOM said, look, you have two options here. You're going to pay us. 20, 25, 30% of all revenue, not profits. You're going to pay us 20, 25, 30% of all revenue mm -hmm. as a charitable donation from all these things that you use to profit from ISOM, or you're going to go ahead and, and, and make this apology video. And uh, here's a question that's been floated, Ethan. So there's a 16 minute video that I haven't watched called Now That We're Past This. Have you watched that one? I hear it's about me. Oh. I don't know. So you've only watched a two minute video. I watched a two minute video. People said that, that other one, uh, Ethan, you know, wow, you should watch it. I'm thinking about e-fapping it. The problem with e-fapping it is that, uh, you know, I share an audience with him. Yeah. So you, people just kind of go, they, they haven't really seen through any of this shit yet. They think that when I comment on the lies, the, the, the absolute lies that it's out of jealousy. So uh, that that kind of boxes you in into in terms of commentary and what you can do. So oh, no, I haven't watched it yet, but let's uh, we could take a look at it. I guess I'll Camelot, watch it with you for the first time. Camelot in the chat says the original video was eight minutes. This is the other one, not two minutes and twenty seconds. So he's saying huh? the original uh, video about the settlement was eight minutes, not two minutes. Where's that? I don't know. He says it's deleted from the channel. I'm taking his word for it. I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's true, but I don't, oh, I don't know why he came out the, with the one him. where, um, the eight minute video where he said, uh, this guy's, uh, these guys are liars and fake Christians. He must mean no, that. No, no, no. That, that's a different thing. He's, I think what came out is saying is that there is an existing or there, there was an existing eight minute video discussion of the settlement that has been edited down to two minutes and 20 seconds for some reason. Camelot, is that what you're saying? Camelot. Is that what you're, he says, I may be wrong. It might be the 16 minute video. Uh, Jeff and four pod says he tries to call it both raggets in EVS. Should we look at this thing? All right. Yeah. Okay. You got a, you got a minute? Yeah. You got 16 minutes, 27 seconds. It'll, it'll stretch out longer than that, but sure. My friend, look, that's what I say to all the women <laughs> and men. I'm an equal opportunity <laughs> stretcher. <laughs> How you do? You having a good Christmas brother? Well, I'm Christmas having a good Christmas. Approaching. Yeah, I, I am. How about you? Are you okay? Yeah, man. I'm having... Uh, my December was not going great. The past, like, two weeks have really fucking turned it around. It's been fantastic. Hmm. Uh, you know, like, all a bunch of issues that were lingering with different people and different things have resolved. Some of them have just disappeared, and it's like, oh, shit. When you're firing all, on all cylinders, life is amazing, and it has been amazing. I don't know if it's going to be amazing forever, but it's great right now. And that's the best feeling in the world going into Christmas with your kids and your, you know, your family. Right. Well, I agree and your, your wife, Christmas. before someone reads into that, my, my wife is included in my family. Uh, I found out from the internet, Ethan, the other day that I've been separated from my wife for months. It was like, 
Wow. And that's why do true. I keep buying her shit then? Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> right. I, they say that about me too. They say Andrea walked out on me two, three years ago, and she should have. And you're uh, like, why is the here. Uber Eats still expensive then? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so, $25,000 a year having pizza delivered to the house. It didn't used to be this way. The 80s were a better time. We got to get back to that. Dude, can you can you imagine like going back to the 80s? <sighs> Fucking I uh, like uh ran, the, not the 80s, but randomly the late 90s when I was in high school will pop up on my music playlist. Like today uh Seether uh the song Remedy came on and I was like, "Holy shit, I haven't listened to this song in like 22 years. I still like it." It's Sounds great. good. I forgot it existed. Here we go. All right. This is behind us, and we are moving forward. I have a couple of things to say to all my haters out there that are dead set on targeting me. You know what? Business, why why even do my family this? Look. Pause this for one second. Yeah. I have infinite haters myself. I don't think about them. I mostly think about my customers. And if I'm going to put out a video, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a video that's going to try to draw my customers closer to me, not attack my haters all the time. Why do this? He lives in a world where he's like persecuted and he, needs to respond to his haters. He grew his channel based on monetizing the haters and being very good because let's be honest, his haters were functionally fucking retarded, right? Like not in the, not in the like real way, but in the funny way, like they're, they're the dumbest people on the planet. Uh, and they'll come out and they'll do these videos. They'd be like, Air July is stupid for hating Marvel because Marvel loves its customers. And you're like, they don't, though. Like, objectively, they don't like them. So then Eric will come out, and he'd do this thing. He'd go after these people who were, like, uh, 26 IQ. And he'd roast them. And it was good. It's good videos. One of my favorite ones is he roasts this guy, Josie, who has, like, 3,000 subscribers but, like, a $75,000 studio. You're like, why do you have this? Yeah, I saw you're, that guy. Yeah, it's a great video. He he fucking goes on his show and he just destroys him. It's like, well, that was perfect, and that's what he did because he he like fight and scrap for his way to every subscriber. But now, once you transition into making comic books that do three million dollar crowd funds, like you cannot, you cannot keep doing that because like while it was funny, you might be wrong. Right, like you might be wrong, and someone can check the record or whatever. I don't know why he's doing this. It it doesn't benefit him. It doesn't benefit his fans. The other video really didn't either, but it was probably part of the settlement. No, like I think the other one did benefit him. He he was able to do a, he's able to frame the settlement video, which would have been a humiliation as a victory yeah. lap. Well, that, which yeah, is something I, that you know. Listen, uh, it's only the settlement though that 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 serves, and anybody who looks at that thing goes. Okay, but I remember everything you said. No, they don't. That's what's... Well, I do, though, Ethan. I do, too, but they don't. They're just like, now what's Nick Ricada going to say? Nick Ricada crying tears, salty tears. It's the funniest thing because I was always like, I don't... Whatever it is, I'm like, I don't want Eric to be in a trademark dispute. I want him to... I just want him to go. I want him to win. I don't I don't give a... Like, I just want this to not happen. Like, ah, Nick's going to be mad about the settlement. Why would I be mad? I want the settlement. I'm mad about his representations a little bit. Cause like, dude, I remember like I covered this. I remember what you said. And now you're saying the opposite is fucking drive me crazy. Here we go. The internet is a place where people gravitate towards the commentators that they favor. And though these commentators vary in opinion and approach, one Eric, thing is understandably common the amongst them all. They're following what he's got to back up from the camera. I, I I'm serious. Like he's right in my face. You're right in my face. I you're bigger than his... him. No way. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not as oppressive. I don't know what it is. It's the puffy cheeks and the Ooh, like, very racist. The the the. I can't. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm fucking with you. Back up a little bit. Look okay, at, thank you. Look at all that. I I don't want to call it white. Look at all the space over here, though. There's a lot of negative space filled up by a random abstract art piece blurred mm -hmm. out. Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird background, but I guess this is YouTube. This is what you're supposed to do. I don't know. I don't know, because, like, uh, other, other I was talking about this earlier, other YouTubers have this, like, wide shot with, like, their whole bodies, and I've never understood that, because then really I look pretty. at that, I'm like, why is my head so tiny? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I want you to look at my mouth and hope that it's on you. <laughs> Here we go. Of course, cherish and value their word. And let's be honest, sometimes folks just 
take the word of the people they favor, no matter how factually incorrect that they are. You rely That's on the it. most ironic That's statement so amazing. in this fucking video. This fucking, <laughs> are you kidding me, Eric? Come on, Eric, stop it. Stop. <laughs> you can't just, geez, like you don't have to. Oh, a, yeah. would, would you love to do this victory lap, though? And just flat out say that, knowing exactly what the truth is about that statement? Mm hmm. It'd be so God. fun, dude. If you had no shame at all, God, life would be so damn great. it. <laughs> Especially if that commentator is speaking about someone you dislike. Like me, as I've said before, some people would never be able to see me as anything other than a YouTube comic book commentator that would occasionally monetize a hater. And though I've done far more than that over the last 18 years, it can be difficult for people to see me in a light that differs from how they do. He zoomed in. He you know, zoomed in from what you said. Like I was I was a fan of the negative space with the abstract blurb painting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And though some people may only see me as EVS superstar comic book legend, uh, other people. Are... <laughs> you know, I love that where he's like, he's like, uh, he says the thing. He's like, well, you know, like people have framed me as a person who has, you know, occasionally on on random occasion interacted with haters, but I've done way more than that. <laughs> like, some Simpson. people have framed me as somebody who interacts with the haters, but I've done way more than that. He I've done a lot into... of shit in that. He zooms in to try and make him fall. He's like, this isn't tomato soup anymore, ladies and gentlemen. This is chicken noodle. What happened? Why is that? Why are you? I don't understand. Like, I don't understand the concept of this video. We're, we're a minute in. Here we go. Discovered me. So they don't see me as a multi-million dollar business owner. They never can see me as that. They, they see me as a man that just outkicked his coverage. To them, everything I do you is are. wrong. And if the commentator that you're. No, 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 why no, is he no, no, no. crying like this? What? This, this is the weirdest thing. Anybody who saw you as a man who outkicked his coverage, that's an honor. That's an honor. That's a like, nice thing. Dude, I have outkicked my coverage by a billion percent. Haven't you? With my wife. Well, with your wife, but also your, like, uh, your, oh, your life channel and, and your comics and everything, time, right? Sure. Yeah. You reframed comics. Ethan, you went from this thing where you're a slave to a corporation selling them everything that you create while making some wage that is uh this is like a toast to a a, a, a seeing eye dog uh, this is almost as good thank That's you a good toast, i'm though. about to cry that was really good i was, was, good I was weeping in the chat i should just do toast all day but no, no you should stand over my coffin and then deliver my eulogy because there won't be a dry eye in the house Dude, if you put in your will that i'll do your eulogy i will i would love that but no i'm i'm, I'm the weirdest fucking thing on the planet because you you have taken this thing of being a comic creator for DC uh, for a wage. You said, actually, I could do it better if you just let me go. And you go to you, you go to YouTube and you way out kick your coverage on on the business. You, you redefine the business. You're an inspiration to other professional comic artists who just the only reason they haven't done what you do is they haven't been canceled. Right. And so they're like, no, I, ha I like my safety blanket. And you're like, you don't need a safety blanket. Here's a whole house that is safe. It's bigger than your blanket. And you're like, they're like, no, I like this blanket that doesn't even go to my butthole. And it's like, <laughs> it just covers my shoulders and I'm warm. And you're like, no, no, no. If you just like, listen, I know the blanket is comfortable, but if you just try, you're famous. You make mm -hmm. the, you draw the greatest properties that exist. Your name exists and people know you. If you just do this thing and you do it well, you'll do better. And they, they go, no, I, I want to, I, I got to say that Donald Trump is bad. And you're like, well, why would you, why would and so you're, you're literally this inspirational guy who has outkicked his coverage on by redefining the profession, but also of course on your wife, like I've seen you, I look at you and I'm like, oh, why would anyone yeah. like, I, like, I can understand like that, guys, no. like who are donut chasers or whatever they're after yeah. you. Right. <laughs> but like women, I don't get it. They're like, oh, <laughs> oh she I, loves me. God, she's a great woman. Uh, I can't Terrific. wait to meet her. She seems cool. Yeah. But that that being said, like, it's it's such a weird thing. Like, no, we all respect that you outkicked your coverage. No one is saying that negatively ever. And he's like, they'll never see me as like this millionaire business creator. No, like we all do. And we all wonder why you're doing this right now. Because you are literally the multimillionaire business creator. No, I mean, Nick, is this the conversation of somebody that's got multi-millions in the bank from his business right now? Is this the, the actions of somebody who's doing well? I I'm, mean, just, I'm just speculate. 
I'm shocked at it because I'm like, it doesn't why, make sense. Why do you do like you if you are the multimillionaire that everybody that everybody sees your crowdfunding Obviously, campaign? Obviously, yeah. Like they're public. The, the the thing is the interesting thing that I found is is always when you're surprised by a multimillionaire. You're like, oh, that guy that sells potato chips is actually oh shit. I watched this <laughs> show. My wife has been uh, pregnant eight times and has delivered five babies. Right. Yeah. Wow. And so I've spent five different deliveries in a hospital, which means the only channel worth watching is HGTV, Ethan. And if you watch HGTV, they had this show for a while called Million Dollar Yachts. But what they mean by million dollar yachts is actually like $20 million. Many yachts. millions, yes. Yeah. And one of them is this $24 million yacht. It's got seven decks. But the third deck at the time, it's not the same now, at the time, the third deck that they primarily lived on is 3,500 square feet, just as one deck. It's as big as my last house. And I was like, holy shit, there's seven decks and the one that they live on, not regarding the other servants on the other decks, is as big as my goddamn house. And the bar that they had in that deck was made of this rare Minnesota, hashtag respect, blue marble that you can't get anywhere else. And it's $10,000 on linear foot for this marble bar. And it's it's a whole like bar that they created. So this thing's like $600,000 for this bar, right? Yeah. This yacht is $24 million. And I'm like, what the fuck does this guy do? And like, he's a potato chip executive and it's not Lay's. I'm like, Wait, what? Ethan, this is a man who has outkicked his coverage. I'm like, you sold potato, shaved potatoes. Everybody fried wants potato oil? chips. Everybody wants that. But it's not Lay's. It doesn't matter. Have you matter. ever bought a potato chip that isn't Lay's willingly? <laughs> Not no, lately, even you but... you only buy them because Lay's aren't available because it's like a vegan place or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Eric July. Like, oh my God, this guy has far out kicked his cover. She has a $24 million yacht. But Eric mm -hmm. July is public. That's the thing. We can all look at the, the amount of money he's made and go, holy shit, this guy did it. The, lay, the, the not Lay's potato chip guy, you're like, I don't even know that potato chips other than Lay's exist. They or don't that cost very be... much to make potato chips. They're very inexpensive to make. Inexpensive yeah, products. You just get Irish, Irish mm -hmm. people and Ukrainian people to harvest them, the potatoes. That's it. Yeah. And then you get Mexicans to shave them. And then you get Italians to fry them with all their body grease. <laughs> Fond of speak so confidently about me. Be right back. You don't even consider if they're talking out there behind. That's because you value their opinion over mine. And there's especially Ethan, he he teleported away like uh like Goku. Here we go. It really seems to apply in an instance that I don't say anything in response. But as I've said before, I'm... Wait, wait. Hey, Ethan, have you, have you ever seen a scenario where Eric doesn't respond? He, he responds. He, he just said that, that, well, because I might not respond. Have you ever actually encountered that area where Eric doesn't respond? He responds to dudes with 500 subscribers. Yeah. This, God damn it. I... God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. Move a lot differently now that I employ so many people. You must stop expecting me to sling mud with others. But just because I don't respond doesn't mean that I don't see it. It also doesn't mean that the nonsense levied at. Why, why are you watching all this stuff about yourself? <laughs> why are you watching? I, I just just because I respond. That's not a brag. Like, just because I respond doesn't mean I don't see it. Why do you see it? Why do you see it? Why do you care? Like you're you're a multimillionaire making millions of dollars on every comic book. Why are you respond? Why are you thinking about it? It's fucking weird. God damn it. Me isn't hogwash. It was quite interesting to watch people that have no idea what they're talking about insist that I'm the one moving with incompetence and going as far as to say that I'm going to bankrupt my company. Why would I say this? He shouldn't have done that. Dramatics over nothing burgers. And so any opinion on that statement, Ethan? <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, I, I do know what I'm talking about. I'm in the very same business. Uh, and one of the things that I told Eric was, uh, when, when we were talking was I said, you don't need to be transparent with where your money's going. Now I, I think we should be transparent. That's the difference between my company and yours. I said, I'm not telling nobody what we're doing with the money, what our expenses are. That's ridiculous. He put out a full expense report. Well, which revealed that he's spending three hundred thousand dollars between three and five hundred thousand dollars a quarter on payroll. 
A quarter? A quarter. Wait, and hold on, you... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me that Eric July put on an expense report that says he's spending between $300,000 and a half million dollars a quarter, which means, I don't do math, I'm not Asian, $2 million a year on payroll? Right, yeah. How much did uh, Alpha Core number one do so far? 1.1, 1. 1, I think. 1.1 1. 1 million? Yeah. It's a success. I'm told it's a success. Nick. What? I'd be terrified if I were him. And the, the, the thing about it is, is that you've got like 15, 15 employees in the warehouse, 15 employees so that you can ship on time. I do this. I understand. I've only got three and it's extremely expensive to just have three. And the consequences for, for that is that it takes longer to ship out, you know, how many uh, of them are personal campaign. pie assistants, Ethan? Uh, How many of them just can, bring you a friend <laughs> every Wednesday? Uh, when we're done fulfillment, maybe they could bring me pies. That would be fine. I, I'll use them for that. But three hundred, no, five hundred grand, fifteen employees. I didn't. This is why you don't show people your expenses. You don't need people. Don't need to know that. But we now know that. Uh, we know what he spends on comics because he revealed that he said that uh, you know. Uh, the, his comic books cost two dollars and fifty cents to print. I have heard uh, that independent of you. I've actually uh, someone reached out to me, an independent creator. He said I use the exact same printer and production company that Eric used, and he said it's two dollars and fifty cents per comic to create. Right. He's like, that's what I paid with this company. Now, is it possible that that creator didn't sell as many comics, so Eric got a better deal? Uh, well, er, it doesn't matter. Eric said, he, he, he said, I had to buy this many comics and it cost me this much. And then all oh, you do right. is a simple division trick and you learn that it's $2 and 50 cents. So, uh, you know, relative to somebody else, my comics, I know my comics cost about between five and $8 to print there. Uh, Cause you do the like hollow foil and the, the glossy printing, the laminated stuff so I can jerk off on it. That's right. I do like a nicer kind of uh, effect on my books. Uh, so I can sell them at twenty five dollars. Uh, so I look at his and I go, yeah, they're about two two fifty. That's right. He's right about that. It's such um, an interesting thing because yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm playing coy here. Obviously, I know that the numbers are out there, and you divide them. He talked about his first order comics, how much it cost, how many comics there were. So it was what like fifty thousand comics, one hundred twenty five grand or whatever, something like that. Yeah, whatever. It came out to two fifty a comic, um, and and that. That's consistent with people who have used the same production company. Um, but that's not the issue. Like that, that is the issue of the comic itself. But we're talking about labor. Labor comics are a one-time cost. You go, okay, it costs 125, 150 grand for this many comics. We sell them at this price. You do this thing. But then you figure in labor. He owns he he leases a warehouse. I've talked about the amount of the lease. It's this is an expensive warehouse, nine thousand square feet. Two bucks a square foot is a, is a rough amount. You can maybe maybe give him credit on depending on the length of the lease that he gets uh, buck seventy five, buck fifty a square foot, and that's that's being generous because the listed lease price is two twenty five, I think, a square foot. And uh, we won't get into commercial leases, guys. Guys, I actually write, <laughs> I write and negotiate commercial leases in my off time. Never mind, it doesn't matter. But. Let's just safely estimate two bucks a square foot. This is all publicly available information. By the way, all of this was derived from uh, from knowing what Ripperverse is, where roughly it is, and just literally talking to the real estate agent who leases the buildings. Um, but it's it's uh, roughly two bucks a square foot uh, per year or whatever. And so you, you come to this conclusion that he's spending, I think it's a roughly 18 grand a month. Maybe if you're generous, 15 grand a month on rental space for the warehouse. And then you're telling me he's spending at a quarter, 300 to 600, 300 to 600 K you said? That's what he said. That's what he said. Fuck me. So you understand like, uh, and this was initially, you know, when the, when the first book came out and he, he did really, really well. Yeah. You, you think that your first book, that's just my starter book. It's going to get bigger from there. So I have to build a, a business that can accommodate shipping out product immediately. 
and that's what he's done. He's, he's put together a, a beautiful warehouse with a great staff. And these guys, uh, their job is to make sure that like, while he's promoting the books, they're packing up the packages, uh, they're putting labels on them and they're ready to ship immediately. He's got, he's paying that money is going to, uh, wow. Uh, is going to, I'm Daniela Pineda. Oh, what's up with the belly? I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. Have you ever seen her? She's no, not attractive. Oh, okay, well, this yeah. is the chick who played Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop. Who oh. Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop, the, the anime is a 5'10, 98 pound Singaporean with triple D tits. Uh, Daniela Pineda is like 5'2, 120 pounds with A cups. And a beer gut, because women are fat these days, Ethan. Yeah, I know. I know. I just, uh, why, why why, I emphasize it when there's so many beautiful women in the world? Why, why are we? Because we, I'm mad at what they did to Faye. <laughs> Eric did the same thing to Ice on the Ministry. All right, let's go back to what? Uh... Here we go, here we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> just Successfully track. whipping people in a frenzy. Hilariously. They tell their audiences. Stop, 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 stop. You did not successfully whip people into a frenzy. You never wanted the people who were whipped into a frenzy whipped into a frenzy because the people who were whipped into this fucking, again, this misrepresentation, Ethan. Prior to all of this, the people he rip, uh, whipped into a frenzy, which I would presume includes me and you and a couple others, right? I won't implicate anyone else, but me and you and a couple others. We were not opposed to Eric July. In fact, you actually did an alternate cover from one of the ISON books, right? Yes, I did. Uh, and uh, my cover did very well. It was the highest selling cover. More people bought my cover for ISON number two. Than How much there anti Jewish were for... propaganda did you subliminally incorporate in your cover? A lot. <laughs> A lot. But more people bought my cover for ISON number two than there were customers for Alpha Core number one. It was incredible. And it was, it was my pleasure to do that for him. It was fun. Happy to do it. Interesting thing. He's like uh, whipping people into frenzy. Like, dude, like the people that got whipped into a frenzy were people who were not hostile to you. Not at all. Why would I be? Or me. I met him. I, I hung out with this guy at a barbecue place in, in uh, Dallas. We had a great time. He's super nice. Yeah. A great fucking time. And I was like, why are you, why are you, why are you like this? Like, don't do this. I like you. Goddamn, whoops, here we go. Yeah. That I should even get new lawyers, but when I said I had... Oh, wait, 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 that was me. That was me. You did say that. Okay. I, I did say he should get new lawyers. Not on the trademark issue. Love the conflation, Eric. Um, I'm not talking about the trademark issue. I'm talking about the lawyers. Let's let's be fucking clear on this. I lo Guys, I'm a lawyer. I'm a pedantic asshole who relies on clarity of uh language i never said eric should get new lawyers on his trademark issue i said if a lawyer advised you that you could shoot a short fat faggot named riley who shows up and tapes 20 dollar bills to your window because you're in my texas concealed carry and you don't have no trespassing signs or anything anywhere they think you can shoot a man and kill him as you suggested retardedly on a live stream like a fucking idiot, you said, I could just, oh, I will, we'll do what we need, we need to handle it. But you suggested you could kill this man for showing up in your public parking lot that does not have back gate access and is on a public road. You could kill him because he taped money to your window. You can't do that. You have to get new lawyers on the self-defense issue. You're going to conflate it and make it about trademark i didn't say you should get new trademark attorneys although maybe you should have earlier because you could have resolved this a lot sooner but jesus christ man it was about fucking ventilating a fat autism who showed up to your public business my private business is publicly listed brother like what are you doing the permits that you had fences, to get though no there weren't fences ethan there were the, fences weren't no there are three entrances Two of them have gates, and the other one on a public access road does not have a gate. You just drive in. And I asked him, is there a sign that says nobody can enter this? And he goes, nah. 
And you know why he said no? Nah? Because in the same fucking building, there's a public business that does vinyl wraps of cars that literally anyone can drive to. And he does not have the right as a partial renter of a three stall warehouse to go ahead and restrict every other stall without a specific provision as lease. And you know, why I know this Ethan, cause I literally negotiate this shit as a profession. Mm. If you cannot just restrict other business stalls in the fucking property from letting public people come up, unless you have a provision in your lease, that says so he doesn't, but he's like, you can't come in here because there's two gates. Like, but what if you just go around? You go to the other road that's public and you drive up it and you just drive into the parking lot. But there's two gates, but there's three entrances. Well, I can shoot him. You can't shoot him. It's Texas, though. Yeah, I know. You can't shoot him. Did he threaten to murder your employees? No, he's retarded. He posts fucking $20 bills with tape on your wall. He gave you money. You can't shoot him. He didn't cause you damage. God fucking damn it. <laughs> it was a fun year, man. I swear to God. That's, that's why is he hilarious. like this? He doesn't have to do this. He does not have to do this. I don't know. Flat out fucking lying. Yeah. Mm. Lawyers, I meant that I had rock star lawyers. You don't. So let me get you to don't. the real God as well damn as it, all. Eric, you didn't have rock star lawyers because you could have resolved this earlier for the same outcome if they just answered in a timely manner. Why didn't they? Were they too busy jerking off pictures of fucking Faye Valentine, Daniela Pineda? What were they doing? Why? Were they looking at Jack, Zach Efron's resurfaced jaw or whatever? What were they doing that they just didn't respond? That they uh, that I saw the ministry had to file because you did not answer by the deadline they gave you. You did not have rock star lawyers. You came to a basic bitch settlement that says no money exchange. We'll apologize for every retarded thing we said. It and didn't say no money exchange. The, that was not said. What well, was said was. He's implying. He's implying I, on Twitter. There's, at there's least. some implications there. There's no possible way that's true. But what he's saying is, you have to understand. This is again the guy who said who spent an hour discussing fences with you, uh, and trying to figure out a way to make it look as though his property was exclusive and private. There's a literal wasn't. statute telling you how to do it, and your lawyers didn't tell you how to do it. Right. But you don't need new ones. <laughs> what he said was. Uh, I did not pay any money for the right to use their trademark. Yeah. That's cool. what he said. He didn't say there was no money that exchanged hands. He was very, very specific. And from his point of view, uh, you know, he uh, is using ISOM, uh, which is not their trademark. You understand their weasel words. His version of ISOM, which is lowercase now, uh, is not their trademark. So... Is, the direct question would be interesting. Like, how much money was their money that went from he can't your, say. Or your business bank account to their bank? And he can't say, can he? He, he that, can't say the answer. You know, there's a there's a confidentiality clause in this. There should be right. Like, like most. Well, you're an independent artist who worked for major properties and you created good stuff for 20 years. You had a confidentiality clause on what they were paying you, right? Uh, yes, I think. Do I? Probably yeah, uh, because I mean, DC doesn't want I'll to go to deviant now. art to get a fat lesbian to draw the next <laughs> version of Green Lantern and have <laughs> and have her go, well, you paid this guy this much. And they're like, well, we worked with him for 20 years. And she's like, but I'm a lesbian who's fat. Well, I mean, all You're a lesbian. Who is you? Me? I'm a well, heterosexual you're... male. Uh, what are you well, talking about? How much are you drinking? Oh, what is no, that's a, that's a lesbian, Ethan. There's something about working at Taco Bell being like super fat and smelly and, and you know, all that stuff that doesn't apply. But wh what I'm saying is this. I think that there is a there is a non-disclosure clause, right, with a settlement or is there not? You're not supposed to say because if you do say you might bring negative attention like the ministry extracted this kind of money from this wonderful small business. And we don't want people to know that. Well, because someone else might have a trademark issue, and maybe, maybe, as a fellow men of God, they cut Eric a good deal, or maybe they were promised certain money, or maybe Eric had to rename Isom in the next issue, right? I, I think it's just a matter of like uh, you're going to see, and he's already starting to do it. Capital I, lowercase S O M, rather than all caps. 
uh, it's long. amazing how easy it is to change a trademark though easy it's very easy and that's yeah. that's the curious thing about all this like you were you were informed on twitter by a hater like a hashtag hater cool but like your audience said like when we google ice on this we come what we come up with and he's like nah is it whatever you you ignored that that's fine but you could have resolved this pretty easily again uh lowercase changing uh adding isom Knox, the adventures of isom anything like that would have undone this trademark issue very simply or just name it something else it's a fucking stupid title anyway isom what, what the fuck is ISOM? no i like it it's four letters like but it? two syllables isom could you get four letters and three syllables ethan can you get a more dynamic four letter title um, almost anything, almost any arrangement of letters. I dare you to get four letters all. that have three syllables right now on the spot. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's woke up. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but what is I, the question? Is what is ISOM? What does it mean? What exactly is it about? And like there, there have been better, better comic book titles. It's not I actually like to hang no. I, to. I like the title. It's it's impactful. It's short, but it's got. I like the two syllable thing. I love that. Um, because it, it allows the 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 shorter the word, the bigger the font, right? Like you put 72 point font when you would have 36 point font for a seven letter word or two words. And so you get ISOM, it's four letters. But KFC is KFC rather than Kentucky Fried Chicken because you get a bigger K and F and the C, right? That's true, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm a genius. Oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm not going to argue about no, it. No, but I, look, it's, it's preference. Personally, I like ISOM as a title. I like that it's two syllables, and I like that um, that it's four letters, and it, it's ab able to done, be done in impact font. But that being said, like it's not the greatest title ever, and it could be changed. The Amazing Adventures in in mm -hmm. sixteen point font. The Amazing Adventures of ISOM. The the confusing ghetto adventures of ISOM. Uh, the guy who beats up club bouncers for no reason, Isom. Like you come up with these. The guy who uh, goes after his niece's kidnapper for no reason, Isom. The guy who abuses women without explanation, Isom. There's a whole bunch of reasons you could say, but then you can have Isom in that same bold impact font, and you wouldn't be infringing on copyright, right? It's yeah, it, it's it's Sonic the Hedgehog versus Sonic. Exactly. Yeah. But he didn't do that, and I don't know why, because Rockstar lawyers never told him to because they didn't fucking do a Google search. Or a trademark. He didn't even have, this is a risk of trademark, guys. You don't if you do the trademark search, you get the trademarks that are registered. If you, you have to subsequently go and do due diligence, you have to try Google searches. You even have to go to Yahoo and Alta Vista and ask Jeeves. And you have to go to these places and try and find out if your trademark is being used in trade, but in some small business that isn't listed on Google because they're racist or whatever. He didn't do the trademark search. And his rock star lawyers didn't either. And then they advised him, yeah, just go with it. And then ignore them and call them horrible Christians. <laughs> For some of you, some perspective. You can think I'm the dumbest person in the world, but no. underestimating me is foolish. Wait, 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 no wait. impression. Hold on. What did he what just say? All this? He said, you can think I'm the dumbest person in the world, but what? I was too busy cackling. What, what the fuck did he say? He said, underestimating me. They <laughs> tell their audiences that I should even get new lawyers. But when I said I had rock star lawyers, I meant that I had rock star lawyers so let me get to the real as well as offer oh, some of you some perspective. Off the you can right. think i'm the dumbest person in the world but underestimating me is <laughs> foolish i'm under no impression that i'm the smartest person on uh no one thinks you're the smartest or the dumbest person in the world you're obviously a capable businessman who's charismatic and wonderful we, that's why we like you that's why we all like you eric why why are you doing this, this is a straw man argument no one thinks you're the dumbest person in the room you had you had lawyers who were not equipped to deal with any of these problems that you talked about. God fucking damn. All issues, and that's why I employ people. When problems occur, it's not just me dealing with them. My team is full of people that are far smarter than I am in their respective fields. That's why. No, 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 Eric, 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 stop, stop denigrating yourself. Ethan, can you join me on this? Yes. The problem was he employed lawyers who were dumber than him. Oh, you think so? Yes. I, I just don't think that he actually had any lawyers uh, until he needed them because there's no possible way that they would have advised him to behave the way that he did. 
No, I met, I met fucking retarded lawyers, Ethan. I went to law school. It, the worst realization of getting accepted into law school and showing up the first day is going, I'm special. And you look around like, oh, no, I'm fucking retarded. Hmm. Like, I'm the dumbest person I've ever met because all of these other people are idiots. Right. And then you have to go to school with them for years. And it's reinforced constantly that you are not special. They're all dumb. No, I, I think Eric is a very smart man. That's why he has hundreds of thousands of subscribers. He's done what he's done. His lawyers don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Well, All they've I mean, done they, is they could if they just made clickbait videos for. I don't think they could. I don't think they could. So no, no I, I don't think they'd be interesting enough. Because hmm. what they do is they go, "But we could charge one guy like seven hundred dollars an hour. Right. Why don't we just do that instead?" Oh, that makes more sense. They could do that yeah. instead of making clickbait videos. Yeah, but like that doesn't make them particularly smart. It just makes them savvy in the business of billing. But Eric is not dumb. He's a smart guy. But his lawyers, I don't think I don't know that they were dumb. I never accused them of being dumb. I said they were they were different types of lawyers. They probably negotiated his lease. They they might have given him some business advice on uh, structuring his LLCs and stuff like that. Transactional lawyers are great for what they do. If his transactional lawyers on the LLC advised him on the self-defense issue of could he shoot Riley in the chest? Well, they're retarded. And if they advise him on the trademark issue, the rock star lawyers who dragged this thing out for fucking months. This is a than quick thing. It shouldn't have taken that long at all. Really should have been like, hey, guys, we didn't mean to step on your toes. What do we need to do this? Make this right. Shouldn't have been like, this embarrassing. I mean, I'm sure like a lot of people kind of walked away from a uh, rip reverse over this. Like, what is this? They they go look. We're gonna we're gonna need twenty percent of your income. You go wait 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 wait. Hold on hold on. We'll make we'll make some statements. We'll, we'll publicly exclaim that we are not in any way associated with you. I don't know why this thing happened. Some trolls. Look, we're really sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of an abrasive guy. I get it. Uh, but we'll make public statements and be very clear that we're not associated with you. You can make public statements saying you're not associated with us. We're both Christians. We're good people. We we really want things to succeed, but we're not the same entity. And by the way, we'll, we'll make like a, a couple thousand dollars to your uh, donation to your ministry. We'll donate some books even. You can hand them out. There's ways to deal with this that weren't done. And you go, why did your lawyers bill you tens of thousands of dollars to negotiate this issue out when it should have been an issue that was done uh, initially for you know maybe 10 grand tops? But- I wonder how much he paid for this negotiation. God, it, it's, it's depressing, Ethan. Here we go. They're there. YouTube and streaming tricks people into believing that the opinion they're exposed to the most is the righteous one. Dude, that's literally you. That's, that's the thing that you do. Which is fine, but that's the thing that you you are an anti-woke clickbait YouTuber. So you have to take the anti-woke position on basically every piece of media that comes out. And that's Fine, but don't lie about what you... Oh, uh, I have been exceedingly fair in all this. He's like, and he's like, well, uh, it's a... Per Dude, there was no reason for me to oppose you. I should have just supported you from the start and said Dick Masterson was a faggot. Mm -hmm. You know why, Ethan? Why? Because Dick Masterson would have sucked Dick to prove he was a faggot to support my position. Whereas <laughs> Eric July would never suck a dick for me. Well, maybe he would. I don't know. I guess I haven't asked. <laughs> That's a lot of assumptions maybe. here. Just it's maybe. Assumptions YouTubers' proof. words aren't gospel, especially the ones with substance consumption problems. My lawyers practice. <laughs> That's you, bro. That oh was a God. shot right across your deck. He blew your balls off with that one. Holy shit. I had no idea this was in there. He's, wow. He's roasting all of his enemies. All of his haters. What the fuck was that? Don't listen to you, Ethan. Mm -hmm. Do I have a do I have a substance consumption problem, Ethan? Oh, you got a Ethan. new uh, bottle of Knob Creek there. That's this nice. is an eighteen year Knob Creek, which means uh, Joe Biden wouldn't even sniff this. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Frosty Chaos says, is he wrong though? I don't know. Make your own determinations. I don't I don't care. How do you Ethan, yeah. legit question. People yeah. say you're addicted to pie. Right. Can you ever defend an addiction? On like can you ever vocally defend an, a, an addiction? Well, it's not right. I mean, you know, eating too much pie. I I I've been eating Christmas cookies today. 
not good. It's not good for me. You know, I understand no, but, that. But someone says, Ethan, you're addicted to Christmas cookies. You're like, mm. motherfucker, I can only get these two months out of the year. That, like, I can't be addicted to them. It's not real. Right. I every have to go cold turkey in January. Every argument you make sounds like an addict's excuse. You cannot vocally argue against an addiction. Go tell someone they're addicted to anything and listen to what they say. Listen to every answer they come up with. They're like, I don't, I don't even eat that much. You're addicted to making YouTube videos attacking uh, your enemies all, all the time. You're uh, haters. I only, I only made and, three the last month. And can't enjoy your success. Uh, and um, it's it's strange. You should just enjoy your success and make happy videos attacking the thing that you're pushing back against in comics, which is, and there's plenty of it right now. Dude, this, um, this is fucking crazy. But you have because, to be right, um, I guess. I don't know. The, the only thing I have criticized Eric on specifically is maintaining his monetizing his haters thing in the face of being wildly successful, which I think he grew up on the thing that made him successful, but then he shifted lanes and then he stuck into it. All of us have done this. Mm -hmm. All of us have gone, well, this is what made me popular. I better do this thing. But then that's not what is popular now. That's not what why you're successful now. Eric now has transitioned from guy who criticizes woke culture, gets called out by woke people, and then goes on and obliterates them because he's funnier than them, which is great. And he goes, I'm going to make a comic. And then he makes his comic. He invested to it. I love this about ISOM number one. He invested to it up front. He goes, we're going to deliver very shortly after the, uh, pre -order, the, the campaign is done because I'm prepaying for all this. And he goes, here we go. $3 million fucking kills it, crushes everybody. And he makes nice number. That was brilliant. He did it. And he sold this parallel economy. He sold his personality. He did all that. People bought ISOM number one. ISOM number two, another smashing success. Another $2.3 million, whatever. Great. Crush it. You, you fucking nailed this formula that you've done. Why are you going back to the monetizing your haters? You're a fundamentally different creature now than you were. He's got to move differently. Yeah. He's going to move. It's like when Walmart literally went from a Walmart yeah. to a Walmart in every rural town to now a Walmart in every urban town. Right? Because like Walmart used to not be available in metro areas. I don't know if people remember this. About 15 years ago, you couldn't find a Walmart in an urban area. You can only find Walmarts in suburban, maybe outskirts suburban towns at best, but mostly farm communities and rural communities because they brought the supermarket to the every man who didn't have a supermarket. Right. And then now Walmart though is in every fucking city on the planet, because, including Mexico, which no one wants to be there. I can imagine. Mexican Walmarts are a disaster. Here we go. Daily in the areas of focus, just because they aren't streaming all the time does not mean that they don't exist. And it sure as hell doesn't mean that someone who has never practiced in this area knows more than them. I <laughs> Eric, no one said you needed new trademark lawyers. I don't know your trademark lawyers. I said your trademark approach was weird to me. And I, and dude, you're the guy. Th listen to this. Guys, I fucking hate this. I hate doing this. I hate pointing this shit out. Ethan, who said Eric should settle this with ice? I did. You did. Uh, everybody kind of did. Dick Masterson did. Every, yeah. Everybody said you should settle this. It should be an easy settlement. What did Eric say about this? I'm going to fight like hell because it's my grandfather's legacy. My great, 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 great grandfather's legacy. And therefore, what can we presume Eric's lawyer said about this? Fight, fight like, like hell. hell. Of course, Jinx, you owe me a Coke and a blowjob. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Look, I'll make it gentle. Why do you do this? fight yeah. like hell uh he, and yeah this fight like hell thing and we're like why are you fighting like why are you calling these people bad christians why are you doing all this and th this is the crazy thing we all said this should be settled immediately you shouldn't be in this lawsuit it should really take this thing why haven't you settled he said i'm not gonna sell i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna do that you can only presume that his lawyers advised him of this and then he's like the, the these people it, Eric, the funny thing is, I never suggested that Eric needed new lawyers on this. I said he needed them on the trespass issue 
where mm -hmm. lawyers advised him that if he were present, he could have shot Riley. You don't think and they murdered really him. said that. He, that? Nobody said that. No lawyer said that to him. He, Not he a Texas lawyer. I, I legit don't believe that. a Texas lawyer who, who analyzes said that. Yeah. I mean, that's just one of those things. My lawyers, I talked to my lawyers. They said I could do whatever I wanted to you. It's a fantasy that, not, that never happened. It's the it's the Second Amendment purist uh, fantasy that, like, what we want to be true, right? We want to be able to shoot a Riley who shows up uninvited and fucks with your property. He like, every fine. He's a nice kid. I don't well, understand. Riley's a nice kid, but I want to shoot him, too. I mean, he's my friend. I want to shoot him, Eric or Ethan. I call you Eric. You're not <laughs> Sorry. Eric. Yeah, I, he's a nice kid. I don't want to shoot anybody. I'm not, I'm not interested in shooting people unless they're a direct threat to my life or my family's life. Not my pride. Not my pride. Your pride, you know, somebody attacking your pride and embarrassing you is not a reason to murder them. No, it's not that, a justification. That's, uh, and I've talked with Andrew Bronk about this on multiple occasions. Yes, Texas has a law where at night you can protect property. The idea was because you might be a rancher out in the middle of West Texas on a fucking ranch or on a this, this giant scape of wilderness and you might have a cow that's a thousand yards away and some cattle rustler comes and tries to take your cattle and you might have to shoot them. Not a thousand yards away. That's pretty fucking far. But farther than you can catch up, then you might have to take out your Winchester and, and blast them uh, while they're fleeing with your cattle that you may not get back. It's, it's when you can never prevent the damage to your property in any other reasonable way. Riley wasn't that. First of all, he didn't damage the property. I tried to explain this to Eric. Taping money to your window is not damage. It says in the statute, the damage has to have an economic impact for the person uh, repairing it. So if you, it, it, he's like, well, if you draw symbols on it, it's like, yes, if you literally spray paint on glass and someone has to go out there with fucking turpentine and wipe off the spray paint, you have to pay someone to do it. Now you've incurred economic injury because you had to hire someone to do this thing. You may get reduced reputation when you wait for the person to come out and do that. And like some customer could come up and look at this and be like, I don't like swastikas or whatever. There are fathomable ways that literally drawing something on a window can cause damage. Riley taped, taped money to your window with bunnies drawn on it. That, that's all he did. And Eric tried to hide that. Like he tried to, he tried to, I, I was like, what's on the dollars? He's like, we won't talk about that. And then Riley told me, he's like, I literally drew rabbits on them. I literally drew just cartoon rabbits on, on dollar. He, he taped $50, dollars two twenties and a 10 to the ISOM warehouse's window. I said, did anybody come out and tell you to leave? No. Did anybody come out and say anything? No. No, I just I just sat out there. I flipped off the cameras and I made fun of it and we recorded a video and then I left. I was and he he told me he's like I was there for like 8 hours in the parking lot. Guys, Riley was there in the parking lot for 8 hours because that's how retarded Riley is and he's committed to the bit so much. He will sit in a parking lot in Dallas for 8 hours. Would any of you do this? No, you're reasonable normal people. Would Riley sit in a parking lot for 8 hours for a joke? Sure. But what he did was he taped $50 to a window with bunnies drawn on it. Eric Eric tried to pretend on my show. He tried to unironically pretend these were threatening messages by being ambiguous. This is the thing I hate most about Eric. I like Eric, but he's fucking lying on all of this stuff. And it's overt. If you just examine any of the evidence critically for a moment, he's lying for no reason, Ethan. I know. Why lie it about sucks, this? It sucks, man. I, I hate this. I fucking you hate can, it. And you know, we both go through this because we're like, all of our all of our people like this yeah. guy, and they don't see him yet for what he is. And uh, we kind of did, and it, it's like uh, it's frustrating because you got to just kind of be quiet. But it's the lies are so goddamn transparent. Why do you have to be quiet? Then? absurd. Well, because you'll face consequences, as Eric told me. Uh, what kind of consequences are there? Social consequences that could lead to financial consequences. I, I got to say this. I got to say this. Um, I have talked to associates of Eric, very close associates who are people I have talked to. I, I barely know Eric and I know some of his friends a little bit better. I've interacted with them more and I, I have to be fair. They have said, uh, whatever, whatever you and Eric have is completely between you guys. That's your thing. We don't see this in any way. And all of the people that I know who are friends with Eric None of them have said an untoward word to me. 
and none of them have shunned me. I don't want any rumors out there that like, I haven't been on their shows literally because I haven't been on anybody's shows except for like my really good friends who've invited me. And at the last minute I said, I can make it. Um, none of those guys have said, you can't come on our shows. None of, nobody's canceled my streams. Um, I love all of those guys and they're, they're great. No one has blacklisted me um, that I know of. Now they, they're, uh, certainly there could be something. Um, and it was implied, it was certainly implied to me that uh, I would not have anything, but I, I just want to be clear. I don't want any specter of implication. My discussion about Eric's shit has always been me and Eric, and I'm frustrated that he has misrepresented things because I have never held malice towards him at any fucking stretch. And um, the fact that even that the fact that he's doing this substance abuse problems, okay. Eric, I probably drink less than your lawyers, you fucking idiot. But uh, uh, yeah, I said you needed new lawyers on Riley's thing because I read to you the statute that says if you want to exclude people from your property, it has to be openly stated in a sign or this particular paint. It's in the fucking statute, you idiot. You have to do this to have a reasonable grounds to trespass someone by their presence. If you don't have grounds to trespass them by their presence because you haven't done the statutory requirements, you have to then give them constructive notice. You have to tell them they are trespassing and then call the police after giving them an opportunity to leave. You didn't do any of that. And I told you, if your lawyers didn't tell you that and they told you you could just shoot this guy, you need lawyers. Now, maybe your lawyers didn't tell you that, but if they did, as you represented, then they're fucking bad on this issue. Yeah, I but, never said you needed to trade But lawyers. Nick, he settled the lawsuit, so he made you look stupid. His lawyers are obviously rock stars because he settled the uh, trademark lawsuit. So you, know, you look stupid now because you said he needed new lawyers. And there you go. It, you know, you know what my favorite face. part of this is? You what? know what the biggest criticism of me is? What? The, the biggest criticism of my legal profession is this. Nick's never taken a lawsuit to trial, which which isn't true, but I've never taken one to jury trial because I have gone to trial uh, a couple times in family law and custody issues, but those are bench trials before a judge because juries cannot be trusted with the custody of children or the dissolution of marriage, mm -hmm. especially when it involves children. But let's ignore those, and I'll, I'll take it as true. Nick has never taken a uh, a jury trial. No, I haven't. Um, We settle. We settle. All the time. Mm -hmm. Beneficially to my client, we settle all the time. Um, if you have to go to jury trial, guys, I was literally a one lawyer office with no paralegal and no assistant because I was starting like I was starting out and doing my own thing. If someone had to go to jury trial, I literally I, I referred them to someone else. And I said, Hey, you need someone who need who has more resources to do this thing. I can't. If you want to go and I'll negotiate your settlement for you. Uh, you want to go and I'll, we'll do motions to dismiss. We'll get the thing uh, knocked out, which we did that plenty of times. We got people completely off the hook by dismissing the charges or uh, dismissing the complaint. Or we negotiated settlements that were beneficial to the clients. Great. Fantastic. So wait, I'm an inexperienced lawyer who uh, doesn't know what he's talking about because you settled? No, no, no. If you want to make the argument that I don't know what I'm talking about based on my experience, you'd have to go to trial and win. Why didn't you go to trial, Eric? You'd have trouble winning, wouldn't you? He would have trouble winning this patent uh, or this trademark lawsuit, I think. By the time it got to where it is, he's got real trouble, doesn't he, Ethan? Well, I'm listening to you. You're a lawyer, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'll listen to you, even though you're a little buzzed right now. I'm not even close to buzzed, Ethan. Even Do you know how much so, I can drink? It's six years of this. That's amazing, man. I do. I'm, 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 I'm a lightweight these days. You're so a lightweight. <laughs> What's drink. a lightweight even mean? Like, as a, I'm, uh, that's not a joke. What's a lightweight mean as a liquor? Uh, I drink a bottle of wine and I'm done for the night. Oh, you give me a bottle of wine, I I want to kill myself. Really? Yeah. The the something about you don't like wine. wine. No, I love it. Like I really do. Like I like mm -hmm. a good red. Yeah. Uh, Lady Lady Raggett's likes a nice sweet white. Mm -hmm. which is why she married me. But uh, I like red because I'm into native chicks, like Elizabeth Warren or whatever. Yeah. But no, um, when I drink wine, I, I have the worst hangovers on the planet. Oh, wow. I think it's the nitrates or whatever. I don't like those. 
whiskey makes me angry and wine makes me happy. They're two different. I'm a, I'm a miserable whiskey drunk. Miserable. Oh, I I like the st- I like the wine drunk. Mm-hmm. I just don't like the wine next morning. Oh, I see. But whiskey, my body's like, <laughs> I can do this all day. <laughs> like Captain great. America or whatever. <laughs> no, it's uh but it's, this this is such a fucking weird thing because if he goes to the trademark and he wins, he's got a good argument. He's like, oh, well, I, these guys said I should settle. And then if we went and won at trial, therefore we won. That Like, those people are stupid. We won. We knew what the strategy. Eric, what we said the whole time was you should settle. That was yeah. literally the, the, the entire time was... This is a ministry. They've said they want to settle. They want to resolve this peacefully because they they just want some clarification that you're not them because you say nigga all the time and you say these things that are inflammatory and they're a ministry that wants to bring like any political stripe who's a Christian into their fold as a quote unquote customer, which is literally just them donating pamphlets to every church on the planet and then soliciting donations to say we do good work. But if you're there saying inflammatory things about people, they go, wait, if people Google ISOM, they come up with this weird guy in a hat who's yelling at them, and that's bad for our brand. All we said, Ethan said it, I said it, Dick said it, everybody said it. You just settle this thing. This should have been settled right away. And you're telling us that you're like trying to reframe the narrative right now and say that, Wait, uh, this lawyer with a substance abuse problem said that you should do something different? No, you did what I said you should do. You just did it fucking three months later like a goddamn idiot. Why? Was it you or your lawyers who were stupid, Eric? And if it's your lawyers who advised you to fight and me who said you should probably settle this right away, you shouldn't even be in this lawsuit, which one of them was fucking dumb? Which one of them had your paycheck? Which one of them had the ink on a banknote? And which one of them was just a lawyer with a substance abuse problem on YouTube who has never, ever asked for a penny from you? Which one, Eric? Which one had your best interest at heart? Ask yourself the question. Ask yourself if they legitimately told you you had a good fucking argument and could fight and you never had to settle. And they said, well, maybe we should settle now after you paid them. How much did you pay them, Eric? How much did you pay them? Ethan, what do you think? 15 grand, 20 grand, 30? I have no way of knowing. I, I, I can't even guess. I How many know, lawyers is something. it? We have no idea. Is is trademark their area? Did they hire a third party trademark attorney? How much? Oh, how much did he pay his own lawyers? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, 30 grand? I have to imagine 15 to 30 grand. Yeah. How much did Eric pay me for my legal advice? Was that a. Rude. He got me at least 25 bucks in super chats. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so silly because people do this all the time. They're like, he like, no, like you should not be in this. The your values, their values, same thing. Who advised you to call them fake Christians? Who advised you to question their legitimacy That's as Christian oh. as Christians? And then to get your to advise your audience, which you, you do this, we all do this in some way, but to to imply that your audience should maybe go question their legitimacy. Go read all the comments on ISOM's video about the trademark. Not the in international a lawsuit. You keep that shit to yourself. And exactly. I, I really get this sense that it was like the first time Eric's been sued. And so he took it so very, very... What? Fuck uh, it. I didn't mean to do that. That's Sorry. okay. He took it very personally and wanted to go to war. And he just didn't need to. He went very... to war like it was a dumb idiot on YouTube yeah. questioning him. It, but it wasn't. It was this... Christian ministry who said, um, look, we, we don't want to fight. Like we, they said, we don't want to see, we want to resolve this, but he didn't, we gave him a deadline. He didn't follow it. That's his lawyers. That's not, even, that's not even Eric. Most, well, I guess in theory it could be, but I'm not going to put that on Eric. I'm going to say his lawyers should have gotten his response because that's their job that he's paying them for. They should have hounded him for his response and then they should have delivered that to ISOM and said, yeah, um, here, here's our thing. Like, we we want to work this out. That was what all of us said. Like, you can work this out. You probably work it out for very little or no money. But the reality is you made $7 million. What, $6 million. 
You made $6 million using their name, their trademark. And you could have looked it up at the beginning and noticed that there was a trademark. You were informed of it actively. So now you've made $6 million. How do you rectify it with this ministry? Call them fake Christians. A great job. Fantastic. Right, we got to, we got to watch the video. The chat is furious. They, they want to see this. We we're only three right, minutes in the chat. I never say or do anything against the advice of my counsel. Moving on a bit. And you literally needed new lawyers, Eric. This is retarded. What you, it's, you guys, if you pause every time he lies or no, says something stupid, we're never no, going to get through this. This is quick. This is quick. Ethan. Yes. That's all I'm saying. If this motherfucker would have listened to me rather than his lawyers, he would have had this resolved two and a half months ago. He's That's trying it. to say that he trusts his lawyers, but he doesn't trust you, even though you told him to do exactly the same thing that he ended up doing. I told you to do this. What the fuck, Eric? But fuck you, Nick, because I've learned a lot recently, and I'll be critical of myself. I was very naive despite being warned repeatedly. Yeah, we can tell. I gave a person or two the benefit of the doubt, and it got me burned. This is because your lawyers, you gave your lawyers the benefit of the doubt. You didn't give me the benefit of the doubt. And the act, we got you burned. You would have just listened to me. I love you. I love you. I like black. I hate white people. How do you not know this about me, Eric? I don't like Ethan. Wait, what? <laughs> what is <laughs> I'm this? I'm joking. I'm a reverse racism. You uh -huh. mayo monkey. I hate you. Oh, my God. I was far too focused on the end game, as you hear me say all the time. There is no fixed pie and alternatives can thrive. And even if we aren't friends, at minimum, we could be cordial. But unfortunately, well, not cordial. everybody sees it that way. Ow. I don't seek to be some emperor of independence. The world you doesn't revolve did. around me. If someone is an indie and they have more success than I ever did, good for them. Hell, I'll try to pick up some game and learn from them. I was wrong to assume that, again, everybody this felt is the about same me. way. They saw the Ripperverse as a problem, and they've made it a mission to try to take me down a pig. No one Narcissism is a problem, and crazy. envy is a dirty son of a gun. Watching people project <laughs> like I'm the one with the ego <laughs> is pretty laughable. I should have known wait, wait, wait. something was up no, okay. when people would say— Either I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to let it go. He said, making me out like I'm the one with the ego is pretty laughable. I, it's astonishing to me. This, is, this Look, whole thing is, like, incredible. Absolutely incredible. How big is your ego? Pretty big. Yeah. You know how big my ego is, Ethan? It's got to be up there, Nick. You can't, you know. If you take my massive, magnificent nose, and yeah. you add my tiny, embarrassing penis, and you put them together, my <laughs> ego is way bigger than both of them. Wow. And my my womanly shoulders, it doesn't even come close. My ego is, your ego is... Of course we have egos. We're, we're people who make money by being ourselves. Like, our egos right. are... Like, it's like having uh, Saigon hookers stroke our egos all day and going, yeah, of course I have an ego. What are you talking about? Of course you have an ego, Eric. That's your whole shtick is being a literal ego. God fucking damn. We're going to go. We're going to go. I'm going to get I'm not doing this. Hey, that they were glad the vitriol was being levied at me. It literally Because no. it seemed to get enemies off of their backs. And that sort of explains why. Wait, wait, wait. Who's, who's <laughs> me? Who no, he's talking about their... me, dude. It's not you. It's me. You you had your enemies. I off laughed of at him over and over again. Because, yeah, I laughed at him I, to his in a friendly way. I said, "Now you know what it's like because it, it's been like this for me for six years, and it's so fun that like now it's you that has to deal with this insanity." And I meant it in a joking way. I was being uh, jovial with him, but you Ethan, know what? You, you never laughed once. Hater. Can you have a single hater who stopped hating you and started hating Eric July? Because oh, yeah, no, there were. I mean, it was great. There like, were? Vicky Verse, Vicky Verse left me alone no, and attacked Vicky him. No, Vicky is an idiot. I, I understand, but, like, the people who would, like, be in my timeline talking shit and all this stuff, they, they stopped focusing on me and started focusing on Eric. And for me, Ethan, it was have you wonderful. ever heard of hentai? Uh, yes. Yeah, where the tentacles go in, like, the woman's, like... Vagina, anus, and mouth at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Vicky verse isn't even the tentacle. She's the camera. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. She doesn't count. Huh. God damn it. Some have allied themselves with people that admittedly attempt to ruin what I've built, even though those same people. Okay, God damn it. This is, about, this is about me. Dick Masterson. Allied myself with Dick Masterson. Here's what I did. All I said in life was, Eric, this is important. This is getting so lost. And 
Eric, Bubby, come on. You said, Eric, you said, we have the receipts and we will be producing them to show that we know these people interfered with our business in this way. We have the receipts. And all I said was, I like Eric. I've been friends with Dick for like six years. Show me that Dick... I, I'm not even friends with Vito. I have made more pedophile jokes about Vito to his face than any of you fucking losers have online. I've called, I was standing in line in Philadelphia to get a Philly cheesesteak, Ethan, mm -hmm. at uh, this Italian place. It was really good. It's not one of the famous ones. This is a little place. And we look, we're like, where are we going to eat these? And I'm standing there next to Dick, an 80s girl. Lady Rackets, because that's who I want to eat with. I want to eat with Dick and Eddie's girl and Lady Rackets. We're all pretty. Um, and then Vito's there, and I'm like, you're the fucking moon blocking the sun from the attractiveness. And Vito's like, well, we can eat over there. Like, Vito, that's a public park that's attached to a school. You can't go within 500 feet of that thing. <laughs> Have any of you ever, to Vito's face... Made a joke about him being restricted from being near children. They weren't even present. And I was like, the very idea of you being on a playground is offensive to me. No. No. Here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> God damn. I, hate, I hate this. I fucking hate this. I didn't align myself with Dick Masterson and Vito. All I said was, I know Dick. I know Vito. These guys are, they're weird. They're silly. They're goofy. But they are themselves. This doesn't smell like them. All I need you to do is show me that Dick or Vito sent that email. Show me any evidence. He goes, we have the evidence. It's going to come out later. This is Eric's words. We have the evidence to conclusively show this thing. We're going to, we're, we're thinking about losses. We're thinking about this. He didn't say they were going to sue them. He said that we're thinking about it. Has Eric ever produced a single shred of evidence that Dicker Vito contacted ISOM. Has he produced a single shred of evidence? The only thing he can say is that Dick, in the context of this guy committed charity fraud, I want his business to fail. That's what he said. I want to ruin his business. He committed charity fraud. Has anybody ever produced an email where Dick or Vito in any way interfered with the business relationships of Eric July? No, of course, of course they haven't. You know why? Because they don't exist. Because Dick and Vito didn't do it. A guy named Obtuse Gnome, who's been a fan of the Dick Show for probably seven plus years, sent the emails. Dick laughed at him. Vito laughed at him. Vito said we like an idiot because Vito's stupid. He's Italian. You can't, you can't blame him for this. All he knows is lasagna and the papacy. But all, all I said was, hey, I've been friends with these. I've been friends with Dick for a long time. Vito's this weird thing that's associated with him. All you have to do is show me the evidence. That's it. That's all I said, Ethan. Show me the evidence, and then I will I will disavow what they said. You know, this never happened. Have you ever seen a shred of evidence that either of them have any responsibility for those emails being sent? No, I I haven't seen that. All you have is them laughing at some guy showing at up uh, at Ice on Knox's grave, right? Like and they go, that's a, you can't do that. It's unconscionable. Well, yeah, it's unconscionable. But so, like, he didn't interfere with your business. And then Dick goes, I want his business to fail because he commit charity fraud. And Eric's on my show. And he's like, wait. So he said, I want you to fail. I'm like, well, hold on. If Why does a company have to want Eric to succeed? It's, it's a weird thing, right? Because he's, he's trying to hold me to the standard where I say, I don't want people to interfere with other people's businesses, which is true. Like I, I just generally don't want that, mm -hmm. but, but Eric's made his entire business of interfering by wanting Disney to fail. Right. Everybody. Yeah. All these guys, all these woke companies need to fail. Of course. Cause companies we companies that are doing things that they hate customers. Like. So entire reason you created comics gate and all caps comics, right? Like, we love our customers. We don't hate our customers. No, I mean, I just wanted to be able to make comics in spite of 
very real woke elements in comics that were trying to prevent me from doing that. That's all. I, I, this, I wasn't I, trying I to put prove that up, anything. You know, I put that up on the T-ball T, and then you're like, I'm playing hockey. I know. I'm sorry about that, but it, I don't want to be associated with this. Like, I'm not sitting here going, I've got a different thing. I, I, I Marvel hates their customers. I love mine. Uh, that's not it. I just, I wanted to be able to continue to make comics because woke assholes literally kicked me out of the mainstream and made it so that I couldn't, you know, uh, make a living making comics. Different, we have different mission statements, uh, me and a lot of these guys. Yeah, that that's the thing. Well, that that's what, you are my friend. Doug Tenable is my friend. You guys have a famous rift over a difference of opinion. You say... I want everybody to buy my comic. Doug says, my comic stands for my version of truth. And I will sell it. It's but fucking he, Earthworm Jim. What is he talking about? He, come on. You know what this is about. Like, don't play coy. Like, this isn't a place to play coy. <laughs> Doug is a very conservative Christian. Yes. And I'm, I'm not going to say Doug is anti-gay, but he, he is very outspoken that he believes that uh, homosexuality is antithetical to, the, to his version of the Christian faith. That's Fine. awesome. So I mean, a ton of Christians like that. You said we're not like that at all. Well, no, that's not no. what I said. I said, no, he, let me get this out of the way yeah, uh, once and for up. all. Yes, this, this let's is me do all. it. Let's do this. This, this was never understood. Ready to rumble. I'm ripping my shirt. Doug said, <laughs> Doug said he couldn't, even though after Doug took about $200,000 from Comicsgate saying I'm Comicsgate to the bone. Doug got his Earthworm Jim property back and he said, I can no longer be associated with Comicsgate because Comicsgate is too controversial. That's Look, what I he said. And I said, all you do Ethan. is say controversial shit. Ethan. All you do is say anti-gay shit. Is, is Earthworm Jim right anti-gay? Do you understand what I'm saying? I said That's you what right pisses now. I'm me off. Look, I'm, I'm muting you right now. Look, look at that. You got muted. You got muted like that guy. The, the second stream might... You're not muted anymore. I was just joking. <laughs> The second stream I you were ever on with that fucking weirdo peanuts uh, fan fiction guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kicked up. No, I I love you. I love Doug. I think I, know. I think there's a misunderstanding, but there I have is. to take I have to take Doug's side on this. You know why? Tell me why. Because he drew me in Earthworm Jim and he killed me with laser beams from Earthworm Jim. And you don't take that personally. I mean, he drew me as a fucking midget, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> if I take it personally, then I will be an offended but hurt bitch. <laughs> like Eric, right? Uh, I yes. can't be Eric. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I I don't have any problem with Doug Tenable anymore. That I, whole thing I, spiraled out of control. And again, everything is about internet narratives. It really is. Repeated and I hated like, it. This, this I, well, video I we're watching you, now I talk to is... both of you privately, right? Like, I talk to you. You don't know. I mean, you can take my word for it. I talk to you privately. I talk to Doug privately. I'm like, guys, this is silly. Like, both of you are fucking great. Why are you doing this? I love you. Like, you need to bear this hatchet. And I then, would love to. He, and then I would it, love it, to. It, Doug's fantastic. He's a wonderful artist. You're an amazing. You both are good writers. Even though I've, I've, I've shit on you as a writer, but it's really a meme. Why don't you read Rock Planet for once? When, when should I do it? Should I do it's it on ASAP. stream? ASAP. Go ahead. Here we go. Here we go. Ethan, will you come into this? Yes. I will read Wrecked Planet on stream on Locals Exclusive mm -hmm. with you. And I'll mm -hmm. give you my, uh, my feedback live. And I will then produce an, like a, an essay or report on the feedback. Will you do that with me? Of course. Yes. I've, It'd be a pleasure. I, I don't even have to twist your arm or like threaten your anus It'd be or fun whatever. yeah i would love that i think that's important great. criticism is vital we don't grow without it dude i i, I want to make locals like so much bigger than it is and so much better and i i really had a great plan for 2023 and got fucked hmm. by a whole bunch of stuff so 2024 i mean to do this and so here's what we're gonna do uh i'm gonna schedule this with you at some point very near future let's do i'll read live the wrecked planet thing with your permission We'll bring it up on stream. We'll even bring it up on stream. I'll have a camera set up. We can read the pages if you want to do that so people can see it. Of course, you want to buy the real thing. Guys, if you don't know this, Ethan has made one of the most beautiful comic books that exists. Dick Masterson said so. Your friend brought it no, out on Dick's stream last I don't, week. And I don't, he was I don't just trust like, him. He liked it. I, I don't trust Dick at all. He goes to Burning Man. He went to the Israeli Burning Man, which is basically where Jews are. 
That's cool, man. That's cool. No, that's where the Palestinians parachuted in and killed a bunch of Jewish kids. How Dick wasn't there Dick? that year, but he was oh. there different years. All right. Lucky Do you know God. how many problems would have been solved if Dick was there that year and the Palestinians would have just shot? It would have been terrible. There'd be the no, there'd be no biggest problem in the universe. No, it'd just be Vito. He'd be like, "Well, guys, I was gonna go to the, I was gonna go to Israel with Dick, but Vito really, and my wife was a hoagie." Vito and guest star Riley would take over the show. That would that what would be the disaster. Riley's the next in the line of success. I love I love Riley. Like Riley, I don't know that Riley's a great content creator or whatever. I love Riley. There's a video somewhere. Ethan, if you don't know this, mm -hmm. I was at Dick's house and Riley shows up. He goes, Hey, can, uh, can I record you punching me in the face? I was like, wait, what do you mean? He's like, literally, I want you to punch me in the face. I'm like, Riley, I don't hate you. I like, I can't punch you in the face. Like you're not a subway employee. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, I need you to do it. So the first time, like I tried to punch him in the face and it was a complete miss. Have you ever tried to punch someone in the face that you don't hate? It's hard. I would, yeah, you need to really be angry to do it. The second time, though, I, I fucking clocked him right in the jaw. But Riley's a stout lad. He took it like a like a good lad. And uh, I'm 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 a woman, basically. And so I punched him in the face, though. And he's like, that was a good punch. It was great. He posted that video. It exists on the internet. That's so if awesome. you want to see me, uh, if you want to see me punch Riley, go find it. It exists out there. All right. Uh, if someone says, please, your convictions are logically unsound. You would make world war and then take the loss. That's crazy. Wait, I think they're talking to someone else. Here we go. Back to the Eric thing. I, we don't, I don't want to watch this whole thing. I'm, I'm furious four minutes in, Ethan. I know, but let's, let's try our best. People have a history of going after them. I guess the enemy of your now bigger enemy is your friend. Glad I could contribute at least to your friendships as you congregate and gossip about me for hours on end. The fact that y'all are 40, 50, 60 years of age doing this is... Which one of those are you, Ethan? Are you 40, 50, or 60? I'm 49 years old. And you're 49? Congrats, yeah. buddy. Thank you. I just turned 43. 40s are great. Wouldn't you say? It's okay. It's starting to, it's starting to wind down, to be honest you with you. You know what? <laughs> don't, don't do this to me. I'm at the beginning of my 40s. I want them to be great all through the rest of them. <laughs> Even the way I look at this, I like... I have maybe 17 good years left in me until I'm 60. Mm. And then I'm, I'm just going to be that weird old guy. He's mm -hmm. like at the video update in the beaded area, mm -hmm. waiting for like someone to come in and be like, yeah, have you heard of Asia Carrera? That's going to be me. <laughs> Bizarre narratives though, man, there's something else just yapping and saying things with the sole intent of this getting hurts. others to believe it, no matter how verifiably false it is. Oh it God, God damn it. Eric, stop. Stop it! God damn it! Ugh. Eric needs to learn to take criticism. Then you can flake. <laughs> that was at me. Yeah, that was at you. Which I was mad on your behalf. Does Eric need to learn to take criticism? It seems like it, this video was proof of that. You know, I mean... Uh, it, it, of course you thing. need to learn to take criticism. Here's the whole thing. Dick Masterson read I saw him. So did a lot of people. And Dick Masterson posted, a, he said it sucked. First, he said, I know this is going to suck before but, he read it. And then he wait, read it. But, now, but, hold wait, on. Let's, let me, be, let's be fair. Real quick. Yes. For a year, he made fun of Vito for saying, I know it's going to suck. Yeah. He, he was like, you're just jealous and all this stuff, of course. Yeah. But then but everybody, he, no one talked about the plot. And he goes, oh, this probably does suck. It okay, probably sorry, does suck. And so he, he read it. He read it. And then he wrote a, a really good standard boilerplate criticism of the story. Literally, and, uh, Critical Approaches to Literature 301. Yeah. Because I took that class. It's literally that. It's just Critical Approaches to Literature 301. It's a basic uh, junior junior bachelor's degree analysis of literary work. It was Sorry, perfect. go ahead. It was really good. I, I read it, and I was like, this was a good criticism. I read Isom, and I read the criticism. I said, yeah, this is great. I didn't even, it's so good. I didn't need to read ISOM and I read this and I was like, this is a basic criticism of anybody's first work ever. And like, I like Eric and I want him to succeed, but like, I get where this is coming from. And the reason people may misunderstand this, the reason I understand this is because I had a screenwriting class and I have gotten the exact same fucking feedback. Sure. Yeah, of course. Anybody who's tried writing, gotten honest review, has gotten that feedback. They said, you miss a story here. 
miss the hero's journey here. You miss this thing, this thing, this thing. This doesn't make sense. Why are you doing this? Why is he fighting this? We don't understand this. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Do you revise it? No, you, you make something new. Sorry, you go do, on. You do the next thing, yeah. Yeah. Move on. Well, I mean, when it comes to getting criticism, especially good criticism that I, I think, you know, when you read it, you kind of go, well, this is uh, this is painful or it's going to convince people that I'm not very good. People who read this. Uh, the thing is, you either acknowledge it and say thank you or you ignore it. One thing that you don't do is fire up a YouTube stream and go through it item by item and deceptively try to debunk it to your audience. That shows that you are not somebody who is receptive to criticism. Uh, and, and again, the way that his his debunking of the criticism was so incredibly dishonest, that was what was so infuriating about it. He took pieces and aspects of it without uh, confronting the entire summation of what Dick was saying. He avoided that uh, just to, to sort of strike it down in the eyes of his audience. And I, you know, me as somebody who's been doing this for a long time, I think initially when you get criticism, you're tempted to like, you're, it, you get butt of, hurt. Of you course do. you are. You are the guy who's going to come in. You, you've you been analyzing film story for you're you. You're going to fix everything. You're going to be great. You're going to fix First the thing. Time. And then you realize that like, oh, and, and here's the thing, guys. If you've never written a story and had someone else read it, what happens when you read write a story and have someone else read it is you realize that you have made connections in your head because you know all the characters, you know all the plot lines. You go, I've made these connections, and then you write them down, you do this thing, and they go, I don't understand how X got to Y. You're like, what do you mean? How, how don't you understand this? Like, you don't say any way in which X gets to Y. Like, but it means this and this and this. It's like, why don't you just say that? Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, yeah. because you got to go have... through and clarify over and over again because it's in your head. But right, like uh, the, the reader doesn't know. So yeah, this is an, it, it, this is an entire genre of criticism of literary analysis is that you are writing the story, which means you have been building this thing, this story, this world, all these characters in your head for years, and you go. Well, maybe, or maybe months, maybe even days. It doesn't matter though, because you have the story here. And so then when you're, uh, you write things down, your brain truncates those transitions from one to, from one to seven. And they go, wait, where's two through six? How did that get from one to seven? Because two through six doesn't exist. And you go, oh, shit. In my brain, it made sense because I know this guy's motivation is this. I know that his power is this. I know this thing is this. And his backstory is this. So I skipped all those things. I have to go back and explain those. I have to detail them. And that is the valuable criticism that everybody's talking about. Dick's analysis of ISOM number one, th this is the funniest thing. I didn't need to read ISOM number one. I just read Dixon or I listened to Dick's analysis of it. I was, yeah, this is literally every single freshman story ever written. You missed this and this and this because you are a consumer who's been consuming for years. You're smart. You're capable. You know storytelling. You know tropes. But what you forgot is to include storytelling and tropes to explain how A gets to C. You skip B. Go get B. Just put B in there. And the, the question that Dick had for Eric was, why didn't you have someone tell you to put B in between A and C? And he goes, this is not real. This is oh, fake. It's, it's because a black man has succeeded. And everybody's like, wait, what the fuck? Like, nobody cares if a black man succeeds. George Washington Carver succeeded during slavery. We don't care about you. Is that, a, is that offensive? I don't, I don't know. Criticism with hate and project and act. Literally no if, hate. Again, I'm the one that's doing that. And ultimately, you can't take criticism means he doesn't give people with bad intentions the time of day. Ethan, do you have bad intentions? As a, I, did, as I, a, didn't, I, I didn't then, and I don't think I do now. And, and here's the <laughs> thing. You did. Uh, you did give people uh, with, first of all, if Dick Masterson had bad intentions, you literally made a video <laughs> trying to debunk his criticism, which is really embarrassing. And what that means is there's no debate about whether or not you can take criticism. You can't take criticism and you need to learn to. And this is all I was trying to impart to you as a 50 or 60 year old man.
who's actually been working in comic books for 30 years and understands how to tell a story and how to draw comics and make them. I was trying to give you a quick little lesson about that so that you wouldn't look like a buffoon on the internet over and over and over again. Somebody who's petty and thin-skinned uh, and doesn't want to grow, thinks he knows everything already. Egos are important. You should have an ego, but earn it. Earn that ego, the, young man. The, the, as, a, as a writing major, who I, I've, won, I've got so many ideas. I've had so many concepts and, and, and things. I think I've even talked to you about some of them. It's like I would love to create a writing work. The main thing, though, is I don't, I don't want to deal with criticism and editing. I'm not good at that. That's not my skill. My skill set is not writing a thing taking an editor's outside perspective and fixing my thing to make it better. Cause you have to realize that your editor really wants you to be better than, than what you have. Um, and you have to trust that it's a hard thing to do. Cause that's your story. That's your baby. But the editor goes, I don't care about your story. I just want to, I just want to make money. Mm -hmm. This is how I do it. And so they do your thing. They edit it. That's one of the main reasons I haven't done anything is that I don't, I'm not good at taking that criticism. Eric isn't good at taking criticism because Dick's criticism was legitimate. It wasn't even mean spirited, but people get the wrong impression that it was because of how it came up because he said, I bet you haven't read it to Nina. And the reality was like, I love Nina. I think she's great. I'd have her on any show ever, she, but she hadn't read it. She's defending no. it, but she hadn't read it. She's defending it because she's defending the idea, the concept, the movement, all that stuff, but she hadn't read the book. And so then Dick says, have, she says, have you read it to Dick? And he goes, have you? And she's like, oh, shit, I, I don't know what to do here. She hadn't read it. And then she starts reading it real time. She's trying to catch up. You can't do it. You can't read a, a fucking 90-page comic book real time in a live stream, right? Like, unless that's your, the focus of the live stream, but it wasn't. She's trying to catch up over and over. And Dick goes, this is the problem with Comicsgate or independent creation or whatever it is. He says... You make this stuff and no one's allowed to criticize successful projects. And what we have found out about Eric is that Dick was a hundred percent right. Yeah. No one is allowed to criticize this guy's projects. Well, look at and what he's doing right now. Look at this. You can come up with any answer. Um, but let me, let me say, Ethan, you don't have to subscribe to this. I'll say it to my own personal detriment. I'm going to come up with the, the most obvious answer is this. And the most obvious answer that you'll see over and over is this eric is an anti-woke streamer right like he hates disney and the insertion of uh, identity politics and identity culture into everything the moment he is criticized the moment eric is criticized what is the first thing that you see it is you hate when a black man is successful that's his audience who says that too it's it's unbelievable it's, it's the so most embarrassing. woke weird shit ever and you're like I, gotta, I, I, I literally don't care. Like, I want black guys, white guys, black when, women. When that women. happens, I got to walk away from that. I yeah. whoever's when, when people are being so transparently hypocritical and making fools of themselves and this movement and what it stands for, I got to walk away. Of course. I'm sorry. I got to I got to preserve what, you know, my own integrity. Uh and uh, I'm seeing it over and over like these guys are acting exactly like exactly like uh, the social justice warriors, the cancel pigs uh, that yeah. they uh, that they oppose. It's embarrassing. One, one of the big credits I can give to you is that uh, when people offered to criticize your book, you said, "Tell me, like I I don't you like I I write I try to write a good book. I do this thing. I've been a veteran forever. But if you have a criticism, including from Dick Masterson, you take it." Well, Eric, Eric again. He, the, his big thing is like these people have bad intentions. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, like, you know, people who have bad intentions can offer and often will offer good criticism because they don't yes. give a fuck and they're trying to hurt your feelings with reality. Well, well, you know, the, the people who dislike you the most will often cut you to the quick by seeing you more clearly than your friends will. And just yeah, because your, saying, friends, your friends won't apologize for everything that builds into why you were bad on a particular place. They're like, well, he's good everywhere else. You're like, well, but that doesn't matter. Right. Like in American Beauty, if Kevin Spacey lives, like it's the worst movie ever. Mm. How can, how can you have that happen? Yeah. Or if in American Beauty, the fucking guy who's filming the bag, he kills Kevin Spacey because he wants to fuck his daughter. That's literally the worst movie ever. 
But the the self ashamed neighbor who is gay tries to go kiss Kevin Spacey, finds out he's not gay, and uh, that he hates himself. And then so he goes and kills Kevin Spacey because he can't put a bolt in his mouth. <laughs> That's a good movie. Yeah. But if if you had Kevin Spacey's gay neighbor kill Kevin Spacey because he wasn't gay enough. That's a bad movie. Or if Kevin Spacey killed himself or his wife killed him because she wanted to fuck the real estate king or his daughter, daughter killed him because she wouldn't go with, because uh, he wouldn't approve going with the guy or the, the other girl whose virginity he took because he thought she was a whore uh, or the guy who definitely wasn't ordinary because he jacked off to videos of bags. If any of those people would have killed Kevin Spacey, it's the worst movie ever. Mm. But this one guy kills Kevin Spacey because he realizes in a moment that he's actually a faggot and then he wants to go and, and butt fuck Kevin Spacey because he thinks he's gay too. Kevin Spacey's like, no, man, I'm just a guy. I just love you because you exist. And he's like, but I, I want to have sex with you because I'm a repressed Nazi gay. And Kevin Spacey's like, I'm not gay though. How do Can you, you play there? the video and shut up about American Beauty? Who, who gives a fuck about American, American Beauty? American Beauty is one of the greatest movies ever made, Ethan. It's all right. It's, I hate you. Or you're being upset that I won't acknowledge you and publicly worship your every word. Just because I don't listen to you, that's you does not mean I don't listen to anybody. Y'all need to, to learn that you're not the only people in the world, and your word isn't gospel. Your word is not By the way, to be pause perfect. it. Pause put, it. Wait, you told me to play it. Now you're telling I me. I know. Now, it. real quick, pick real quick. One of the things. Even. One of the things that I said that he said in our private phone conversation was he said to me, "You think you're way more important to the independent comic scene than you are." And he denied having said that, and all his fans said he would never say that. Here it is. He's saying it right this, here. This is one amazing thing because, I, like, I knew when you said <laughs> that. I was like, oh, shit. This was – people are like, what do you mean a night letter? They're like, this is the night letter. This is the thing. You think you're cool. You're not cool. I'm big shit. Watch me flex my big shit on you. And people are like, what are you, what, 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 not, nothing he said was not, was, uh, was dangerous all innocuous shit. It's like, no, you, you're missing the between the lines. The lines are here that you're reading. And then the between the lines is that this guy is threatening. He says, all right, all right, play thing. the video, play the video. Oh, of course. Video. People in creative leadership roles. Do you tell me what to do? Check me. Yes, yes, I, will. I have to. No, the Sasuke the sisters chat. called me the most scrutinized man in comics and they're right. But it's something that you're I'll not even close to right. You're not the most scrutinized man in comics. Have you met Mark Wade? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of money off of Mark Wade. Let's go over our work. It'll be panel for panel and like anything else. And again, you are free to do that. Chat away. But you can at least be honest about why you're doing it. Actually, Eric, none of us are free to do that because some of us got the kiss the ring memo. Yeah. You at least be honest about why you're free to the reason. Let's do this real quick. This is, Ethan, I know you want me to play the video because you're a cuck to the fucking chat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am. Yeah, I like the chat. Go subscribe to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. No, I don't like the chat. Guys, on YouTube. leave my channel and go subscribe to Ethan Vance Camera. No, here's yes. the thing. He says, uh, he's like, this guy's sitting here. Guys. I just got two subscribers by saying that. I forgot what he said. I'm not an alcoholic. I, I, I was nice to the chat. I said, go subscribe to Comic Artist Pursuit oh. on YouTube. I got two. Let's do that. Let's do that. I forgot what he said. Here Comics, and they're right. But it's something that I welcome and anticipate. Folks, go over our work. It'll be oh. panel for panel and like anything else. And no. again, you are free to do that. Chat away. But you can. No, okay. That's they, Yes, that's what it was. We were not free to do that. We were not free to do that. Eric implied to you. Is clear to me you cannot criticize this comic like you can't do it like you can do it but just so you know if all if you do it all of your associates panel by panel all of them might not talk to you ever again i want to be clear eric i think eric was wrong on that because his associates have never said an untoward word towards me but the reason that this entire dilemma exists is because people did go through a couple panels to say this wasn't great. That's it. And I, I've sent messages to you, Ethan, because I'm not an artist, right? You're an artist. You're you're like a gay drawer or whatever. And I send you a message. And I'm like, here's a panel from uh, ISOM 1, 2. I don't even know what they are anymore. Like, why is the lighting inconsistent? It's got two more subscribers. 
Thank you, chat. I love you so much. I'll try to shut this clown up and get him back to the video. Why is the lighting inconsistent? This is not hard. I can't even draw. And I go, why is the lighting not consistent? Why is there a lens flare over here, but the light source is coming from this way? Why is that? The artist is actually a good artist. I've seen his other work. What happened? Homosexuality. Okay. You can at least be honest about why you're doing it. This whole, we're just trying to help trope is extremely disingenuous. There are people that- Literally, uh, guys, stop. I'm I'm sorry. There's no benefit to me criticizing Eric. Is there any benefit to you criticizing Eric? No. I don't get anything out of it at all. I get grief. Dude, if I- uh, if I ignore Dick Masterson forever and I praise Eric at ISOM's the greatest comic of all time, here's what happened. I gained 30,000 subscribers and probably $100,000 in super chats over the next 12 months. Let's do it. Fuck it. Eric is the greatest comic writer of all time. Have you met Ethan Van Skyver? He's trash. I love Eric. I'll, I'll do that. I'll make that video. I'll wear blackface and do it better. <laughs> That think we're supposed to act oblivious to the obvious motivations of certain individuals. Yes, no motive. There's we a difference lose between money on this, you fucking retard. And destructive chatter. Oh, it's so awful. Someone that seeks to destroy you is not useful. You'd be a fool to prioritize their opinion. No one sought to destroy you, you fucking idiot. We wanted to make it better. We're baffled by what you did. God damn it. Opinion, and there's nothing smart or honorable about it. Fuck Someone you. that Fuck supports you, right you in your mouth. and they genuinely want to elevate you in ways that ensure you a return, they're valuable. They can be extremely helpful. Three the people more that, though, are doing Thank it for a show are doing it for just that. Literally no one, Eric, has done this for you. Everybody who said you're great and it's the greatest comics ever, these are my friends. I love these people. They're <laughs> sitting there. You, they're sitting there, they're like, Alpha Core is the greatest comic I've ever read. It's like, stop it. Have you never read a comic in your life? I have read Archie comics <laughs> in the goddamn pa- family circus comics in the paper. Jesus Christ, you're, you're telling me Alpha Core is the greatest. Their entire monetary benefit from this is, is higher than what, I, what they will gain is higher than what I will lose. Jesus Christ. Because we are negative about the product does not mean we're negative about your success. This is the most fundamental fucking dishonest argument I've ever seen. I have never, ever wanted Eric to fail. He's like, oh, they just want you to fail. They criticize your product. No. What are you talking about? This shit is weird. But the people who say that it's good when it's not, why are they doing it? Eric, those people are making money off of your labor. Do you remember that? Go back to 1840 and see why. Jesus Christ. Two more subscribers. Thank you, chat. Mwah. Love you very much. Two? Thank you. Were you getting like nine subscribers? Yes. Embarrassing. You chat, get over to Comics Artist Pro Sequel uh, Secrets on YouTube. Comics Artist Pro Secrets. It says that right in my uh my profile on my I don't avatar. Care about that. I don't I can't read. Oh. A show. It's content farming for views. Likes, retweets with a side of jabs. That. That's your business. But no, no, no. call it what God it is. God damn it. That, well, Ethan. no, that's what Dick Masterson's doing. He's right about that. Like, Dick Masterson has completely blown up his uh, subscribe star or his Patreon. <laughs> He's making $25,000 a month by laughing at Eric July. There's a market for it. I, there is a market for it. Oh, I, no, he stopped laughing at Eric July. Maddox. Oh, now it's Maddox. It. I know. No, that was the thing. When when Eric July was making from Dick went from sixteen grand to eighteen grand with Maddox or with with Eric July, mm-hmm. because people are like, oh yeah, Dick's making fun of a guy. Maddox comes out and drops a video, and he goes from eighteen grand to twenty five grand a month. He gains he gains seven grand a month on Maddox. He gains fifteen hundred to two grand a month on Eric July, only because he's so good at it. No one benefits from shitting on Eric July. All of our friends, all of them are required to worship Eric July. Why? He's a pet black of the conservative movement. He is the token. I'm sorry. He didn't deserve to be that. It's not fair to him. Eric's a unique individual talent. A good his own thing. He's wonderful. But sorry, conservatives go look at the black that we have versus the black that CNN has. 
and he our black has made a comic book. Has Don Lemon ever made a comic book? If he did, would you want to read it? No, because it'd be just two gay guys fucking for hours. Yeah. And saying Biden's the winner or whatever. No one wants that. But I'm sorry. The bunch of people are like, this is a black man who did well. And they're all like shocked. And so then Eric July is great. And it's like, well, we it's like it. 20 Eric's more subscribers, Nick, because you asked them to. 20 course, more. 20 more. 20 <laughs> in not, that one instant. Guys. How much do I have to make fun of black people to get you to subscribe to Eric or Ethan Van Skyver? Why do I keep calling you Eric? Oh, I'm not in Because our names begin with E, and we're looking at an Eric video. So it's oh, Ethan, do you like cheesecake? Uh, yeah, I, I like cheesecake. So I went to my um, I went to my local coffee shop. They have a cookie dough cheesecake. Oh, really? It's so good. Do you like whiskey? No. Because I got some cookie dough whiskey. I don't want that. No, I like it's whiskey. I don't like faggot whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you drink cookie dough whiskey? I don't know, real. dude. I bought it. I haven't opened it. It's eat just a, cookie dough and put whiskey in, in your like... butthole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Sorry. No, this is the weirdest thing. This, this is the false fucking thing that Eric is pushing. None of us did what he's saying. None of us did this shit at all. My Even God. Dick. Dick made fun of Vito for a year, saying you're jealous because you're making a shitty comic that no one's going to buy, and Eric's making millions of, millions of dollars. Comic comes out. Dick, he's like, wait, no one's talking about the plot. Everybody's talking about how happy they were. They bought it. And he goes, it's probably terrible, but who cares? And then Nina's like, have you... On my show, Nina's like, have you read it? I love Nina, by the way. She goes, have you read it? He goes, have you? She starts reading it on camera. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. And Dick's like, no, I haven't read it. People are like, review this comic. So he reviews the comic. He's like, well, this isn't good. Here's the notes on it. And Eric's like, yeah, he hates me. Like, what are you talking about? Like, wh where did this come from? It's the most dishonest, disingenuous bullshit. Nobody's criticizing you because they don't like you, Eric. No one is doing this. Everybody is saying, why are we you We have to keep like saying, this? I don't dislike you. I like you, Eric. I like you. You have to say it because he's black. What? No, Ethan, <laughs> you know this. I don't you like this. this. I don't like this guy I'm looking at right now. He's a fucking liar. I, you know, I don't like what he's saying. I think he's you have lying. to say it because he's black, because he's a conservative I don't care. black. I don't give a shit. Glenn you know, Beck he's hired there, a black guy. He's telling lies on his big YouTube channel. Fucking you know about hate me. this. Why do like, I have to it's, like it's, that? I don't like that. You don't have to, that but everybody make else me happy. does. Everybody I mean, I look at him. Like I, I look at his like, big well, bloated face with his big goofy beard. You know, that's way out of whack. Fucking trim that shit. And I see him telling lies about me and my friends, and and playing the victim and crying and stuff. He's made seven million dollars, and he can't just be happy about eight, it. Eight now, eight and then eight million, eight million, eight million maybe. Now? I don't know. Oh. Uh, and uh, he's sitting there crying the blues and attacking me and and with lies. I mean, uh, you know, God forbid. You know, listen, uh, uh, why? Why must I sit there and say, no, I like you, Eric. I no, Eric, as you're sitting there making videos saying that I must hate you. Eventually, when you say things like that, it's going to come true. I, I don't like Eric July very much right now because he's making, he's doing shit wow. like this. Very offensive. I know How many shocking. slaves do you want to own per day? How many what? Slaves do you want to own? I don't want to own any. It has nothing to oh, do wow. with Oh, wow. I racism. thought you were just a racist. All I'm saying is, uh, I look at this, and I'm not going to sit there. Like, I am not a liar, okay? I'm not somebody who yeah. lies. I don't care about YouTube clout. I could I give a fuck. You. Although, if I could get some subscribers from your chat. <laughs> I hate you so much, man. I love no, it. No, here's the thing. I, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid, and I'm the worst YouTube content creator because I don't give a shit what people say about me. Like, okay. A misinterpretation, whatever you you say, a negative thing. I'm like, all right. No, I, it's not even that. I have actual legitimate talent. I, know. I, I don't need. No, no, I you. don't, Ethan. <laughs> I am. I am seriously here, out here begging for soggy <laughs> bread on the free. I go up to homeless people, like, "What have you got today? Can I have half of it?" Yeah. I, I can't draw. You want me to draw you a stick figure? I can't. It's curved. Right. Have you ever well, drawn all a stick I'm saying is this, curved I, even, Ethan? No, no. People, everybody says that. Like, they go, you can draw. I can't even draw a stick figure. I can't even draw a straight line. That's how I know humans are all robots. All I'm saying is this. I don't <laughs> like this. This person I that I see draw. in don't front of me right here. Me. This person. Who am I drawing a Muhammad? <laughs> you you can do this? <laughs> <What>? Oh, <Ohug, brother. laughs> How is that Muhammad? That's a woman. 
That's not the woman. Uh, Muhammad was a beautiful feminine <laughs> man. Well, I will burn you to a bed either by the skyver and we will throw you from the rooftop. Oh, my okay. God. Okay, go on. All right, here we go. I Let's love, see more I love of this everything video. everything you've ever said in my life. I know. No, it's, a, it's a weird thing because none of us did this. He's straw manning everything. And he's straw manning because he's putting a straw in a malt liquor. Is that racist? It's racist. We're going to go racist. This, these are this, this, there are I'm, also goofballs that have recently used this criticism lie to boost themselves up and conflate two concepts. They try to conjure a... Stop it, you fucking retard. None of us got subscribers from criticizing you. Fuck off. Fake narrative. Only so they can suggest that they're the ones that are high and mighty and they can just take criticism, even though... Do you, does this motherfucker pretend that, like, liberals who hate Eric July who are like, yeah, he's bad because they said he's bad. Are like subscribing to you or me? I don't Did, know. I, I don't know what this thing. is. This is like, like bizarre. It's like someone going, oh, he doesn't want to shop at Sam's Club anymore, so he goes to Costco and I'm Costco. Stop How about it. if you just enjoy yourself and run your business? We know and, that's not true. Get oh. over yourself. It shouldn't surprise me, though, that drama farmers act like drama queens. Comics <laughs> isn't for the faint of heart, but it isn't <laughs> some nerd blood sport either. Just keep it 100 with your motivations. and. I literally said for months, I don't even, even talk about this. I don't want drama. I don't want blood sports. I hate <laughs> drama. I don't care about fucking anything. He's like, well, in a drama farmers. None of these people are drama farmers, you motherfucker. None of you dishonest piece of shit. God fuck me. Stop with a facade that you're trying to help me or the industry out. Literally work. If you truly literally want someone me. to be great, you want to be as clear and concise as possible with your approach. It makes no sense that someone that supposedly just wants to help does everything except pick up the phone and contact the person directly when you have the contact and you're on speaking terms with them. Fuck How's off. this? So this is, this is the uh, thing about the text message that he sent me. Understand that at some point- It's also me, by the way, but go on. Yeah, trust is broken at some point. I can't trust you. You, you send me text messages threatening me uh and i can't we're not friends at that point we're not in a, a situation where i can pick up the phone and have a conversation with you it's just not something that we do we're not cool like that uh at that point uh you know is that is that hard to understand you could we, just pick up the phone and, no i don't trust you i think you're dangerous at that point you're sitting there saying that unless i get in line and stop associating with people who i like who don't like you uh, then there's going to be problems for me. I, I can't talk to you on the phone after that. That's not something that we can do. We're not friends after that. So Eric on my show, he comes on my show and he says, uh, hey, did you contact your your boy, your partner, Dick Masterson, partner. privately? And I said, actually, yeah. He said, hey, man, this is uh, fucking up my shit. Like, you're, you're talking about my friend. Like, what's... My friend Eric, what's going on? I don't want to do this. I don't want to be in this. And Dick's like, well, throw me under the bus or whatever. Like, he's like, you know, you do whatever to me and I don't give a shit. So fuck me over. Fine. Do what you need to do for you. I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that, though, because I have like this thing called integrity where I have an opinion and my opinion is not based on your benefit to me. So I go, all I, all I want from Eric, all I want is the proof that he promised. And this is critical to everybody. Guys, Eric July promised on a video proof, proof that Dick and Vito interfered with his business. And what he meant at the time was that they, not a guy named Obtuse Known, published or uh, created this uh, email to ISOM for the purposes of getting Eric's comic book embroiled in a trademark lawsuit. Let's be very clear on two things. First of all, that's not illegal. If you believe that someone is violating the law, you could in good, con I don't like this, but you could in good conscience and good faith and fully legally contact the aggrieved party and say, Hey, someone is violating your intellectual property. You can say that they can say yes, no, whatever. That's the first thing. The second thing is I never said that any of that was valid. I, I actually said I'm not a big fan of that. Whatever. Doesn't matter. 
What happened after that, though, was that they did that, and then Eric promised, he promised receipts were coming. And I said, I don't think the receipts are coming because I know these guys. And I just flat out asked him, I said, Dick, would you, did you interfere with ISOM's uh, thing? And he says, no, I wish I would have. Let's be very clear on this. I wish I would have because it's funny. But he didn't do that. Dick would just admit it. Eric has maintained the entire time that Dick and Vito did this thing. And he's maintained it in a very vague way lately because he can't prove it. That Dick and Vito did this thing and they're responsible for all of his legal woes and his professional woes and whatever. By the way, Alpha Court, Ethan, let's be honest on this. Alpha Court doing 1.1 million is embarrassing, right? It was, it's, it, it's a it's tragedy. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. No kidding. It, it's going to pay for six months of employee salaries, according to his transparency statement. Yaira better do trouble. four million. Yaira might do better, but you know what's coming up after that is the uh, Goodying book, and that's going to hit five hundred thousand. That is going to be a Yaira has to do. Yaira has to do it. The simp's have to support. Come out and come out and drove. You the better, you better pay those Bra Brazilian chicks for their self insert tits on Yaira. It doesn't look good either. The pages, I'm excuse me. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's that great? I've never seen good art <clears> from <throat> anything in Ripper. For, I want to, Ethan. I want to. Uh, people misunderstand me. Like I am gay. I'm a stupid lawyer, but I I I buy art that is five figures plus. Like I buy it as a hobby. It's funny to me, and um, I consistently look at the fucking Ripperverse art and I go. This is shitty art. Like, I'm not an artist. I can't draw better. But I can look at this and go, why is lighting like this? You have lighting that's over here, casting shadows this way, which means it's somehow behind the subject, even though there's no light source, but it's behind the subject, casting shadows this way. But your, your actual lighting in the scene is over here, and it's producing a glare off the barrel of a gun over Well, it's side. because he's using something called... Uh, his, the artist uh, is using something called... Uh, they're using 3D models. They're using SketchUp. Uh, and SketchUp and then other tools uh, where you can get anything. You can get a truck. You can get a specific doorway. You can get a specific building. And you can shoot it from any angle. You can run it through a filter, put it down as a comic book panel. You can render it a little bit, throw little noodles on it, you know, and call it, uh, call it your art. Same thing with figures. They have figures, men in suits, women in uh, pantsuits, women in bikinis, whatever you want. You can pose them in different ways. But the problem with doing that and tracing them is that <clears throat> artists know, like, you have to adapt. I don't get into it too much. There's one scene where, like, Isom is laying on a couch, and the guy just took a, a figure of Isom and just laid him on the couch, and the figure has no weight. He's not exerting weight on the couch. He's not, his body isn't reacting to the couch. These are things that artists know to do, uh, that 3D model sketch programs don't know how to do. Uh, Eric is paying for this. He's paying for this guy to do this. and I. It's wild. It is He's a incredible. good artist. I've seen his other art, and it's not bad. It's he, bad here. He, he doesn't seem to care. Uh, so, you know, he's Does rushing he out paid? these comics that are utilizing all these 3D assets and uh, congratulating himself for getting books out on time. He's spending way too much money on a warehouse with 15-something employees. Who he's Why do you have a 9,000-square-foot warehouse to deliver one book a year? Maybe two books, even four books a year. Why do you have a 9,000 square foot warehouse? I don't know, man. You can man. do this from I'm a just... storage unit that costs $100 a month. All I'm saying is it doesn't look good. And I'm, I understand Eric's anger. I, I, he's scared and yeah. he's angry. Um, but he's taking it out on the wrong person and, frankly, on the wrong people. Uh, frankly, uh, I didn't mean him any harm. But this is going on way too long. There's way too much anger over this. Yeah, he could He could have been angry over this. He could on. have redeemed himself by resolving this early. He should have resolved it from the get go. But you can you can you can forgive a YouTube creator who made his business up monetizing haters from like playing it out a little bit. Now it's ridiculous. None of us want him to fail. I raw dog you says your friend is an asshole, Nick. I think you mean you know, Dick Masterson. Get over it. Yeah, Dick is an asshole. Do you think that doesn't make him right? 
go read Isom one and go read Dick's criticism. Go read it. Instead of listening to Eric retardedly try and apologize for it. So if he was against you with ridiculous accusations and trouble causing, you would be a little mad too, to be real. I let's be very serious on this. I rod on you as someone who's sat on the board of charitable foundations worth millions of dollars. I would literally never have solicited donations to produce something that costs $2.50 and then said, we will cover the rest of the cost, which is maybe four bucks and then charged 15 bucks a product. Ethan, that's crazy, right? We know it costs $2.50 to produce a book. Maybe you generously say four or five bucks a book for shipping, but you're, you say it's bulk shipping. So it's cheap. You go on a live stream, you say, well, it's bulk shipping, so it's actually cheaper than five bucks a book. And you go, okay. I, didn't, I wasn't looking for that, but like if you want to make it four fifty a book, you go, well, it's, okay, so you, the, the cost of the book plus the shipping is this much because that's how many books you literally delivered. And then you go, but we took in this much money. You go, that's higher than the other thing. How do you take money in that you get spent out? Like, that doesn't make sense. And then I ask him a very specific question. If someone clicks the button to buy one book that costs $15, does it cost 15 bucks to put one book on a pallet and ship it? Ethan, what's the answer to that question? Uh, yes. yes is the answer. Don't the even answer, answer is yes, of course. Of course, if, if you're asking 15 bucks to ship <laughs> one book to one cripple, yes, it's 15 bucks. The reason is because that's what you charge. If you charge 12 bucks, it's 12 bucks. If you charge 10 bucks, it's 10 bucks. Oh my God, because the reason you charge that price is because that's what it takes to get the one guy to get off his phone and stop masturbating. Don't go to the bathroom and go to the shelf grab the book and put it on the pallet. That's it. Cost 10 bucks. Got it. 250 for the book, 750 for the labor, whatever it is in, in the shipping. It's fine. No one cares. No one actually cares what the price is. But Eric goes, yeah, it costs that much. But if you buy like 10, it costs less. Like, stop. Why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you giving me numbers that isn't $17? You, you told me it's $17.50 a book. He's like, but with bulk shipping is actually 14. No, no, no. It's 1750 a book. Why would you, you ask for 1750 a book to send a comic to a crippled kid who's gonna die in two, two years? And read out, of course, the last thing they read, and they're gonna go, like, well, yeah. I wish this was a predator book. Just give them the money. I mean, it was a bad idea. The idea of, of sending do comic charity. books. Don't out do charity. charity. Well, go ahead and do charity, but just send no, money. No, Ethan, don't do charity. Yeah, yes, you do charity. Your business, your your book doesn't do charity. You do charity because you're like, oh, I made a million dollars. Here's a hundred grand in charity. Do that. Ten, 10 grand of your income. It's crazy. 10 grand. Yeah, why would you do that? What are you, Democrat? A hundred dollars in charity. There you go. Perfect. I I piss in the mouth of Democrats. Wait, here we go. We're we're not going to do this very much longer because I need All to right. go to bed. Yeah, you <laughs> five seconds. Still sober, Ethan. Don't you fucking sure, know. sure. What are you, Eric July, accusing me of being drunk? <laughs> you want them to improve after all. Yes. Direct contact is substantive. Instead, mm -hmm. you fire up streams and tweets and start gossiping like women. No one does never that. directly contacting the person, treating everything like it needs to be a show. Okay, I I gotta stop. This is the last time. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Stop screaming. Fuck you, Eric. Eric did this to me. And he's like, why didn't you privately, did you privately contact your partner? Talking to Dick Masters. And I said, yeah, actually I did. What'd you say? I said, well, hey man, you're fucking my life up. Like, can you stop messing with Eric July? I like his, I like him. I like his thing. You said that? Yeah. Why didn't you contact me? I said, because Eric, you didn't do anything wrong. Why well, would I contact you? You didn't you at the at the beginning, yeah. Dick came out and criticized Eric and I said, Eric, you didn't do anything wrong. Like you made a thing, there's criticism or whatever, and you didn't listen to it. Fine. 
you, you did the thing. You made the book. You sold the book. I like the book. I want everybody to buy it. You didn't do anything wrong. He's like, oh, okay. But listen to him now. Firing up streams, doing this thing, blah, blah, blah. No one tried to profit off your shit except you. No one tried to profit off of ISOM. Eric did very much try to profit off of ISOM. He tried to cover up the fact that his book is shit. His art is shit. Everything about it is shit. But people criticized it. They must be liberal. They must be woke. They're, for, they're haters. Therefore, he can sell more books. Right? Am I wrong in this, Ethan? Tell me. I think, yeah, he's just saying that you must have an ulterior motive of shutting me down. And it must be jealousy. Yeah. It's crazy. Eric. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm jealous. You know why? Because I could write a book while shitting in 20 minutes. Because we're going to end the show in 20 minutes or less. And go up to the bathroom and take shit. I write a book better than ISOM. I haven't even read ISOM. I know it will be better. It will be better than ISOM 1 and 2 combined. It will be better than Alpha Core. ISOM number 2 doesn't even follow ISOM number Didn't matter. I could do that right now. You know why? Because I would write Lindsay Lohan's uh, transition from a Disney queen into a whore. But she would have superpowers. And she would trap Justin Bieber into a uh, $7 million divorce settle settlement. She'd never have to work again. Be better than AlphaCor. Don't look at me like I'm that. not saying you wouldn't. I'm just saying why, you know? Why would I write that? Because it'd be better than ISOM 1 and 2. Because it's not hard to beat the basic bitch. He wrote narrative. Because... All Eric had to do. So th this is the funniest thing I did to Dick. I wrote this very complex tweet about how like Alpha Core should have worked out. He sends back to me. He goes, "No, that's how it like would have worked out if that was a writer." But instead, Eric tried to write a detective novel into Isom, but he failed at every aspect of the detective novel. I was like, "Why would he try to write a detective novel? That's hard. He should have just written a hero's journey. That's easy." You just make him Luke and make him whiny. A detective has to be smart, Ethan. Right, yes. A, a, a fucking retard like Luke Skywalker has to be an idiot. Because he's like, why is Han Solo not having sex with a big hairy Patrick Ewing called Chewbacca? Like, well, I don't know why, but he they hang out a lot. Luke is an idiot. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Is that true? Do you think Luke is smart? Luke Skywalker is not smart, no. I was I thought I was going to remove you because I thought you were going to say it was. Let's stop this. Ethan, I love you. Let's uh, read a couple of Super buddy. Chats. 